Um, none of the clients are here. Uh, Miss Alsop, you're here in this case today, correct? Yes, Your Honor, I am. Okay. Um, I read the report, uh, Miss Peterson's report, and it looks like everybody's doing well. Mom is, uh, Miss Caballero is getting some, uh, lots of unsupervised visits and that they're kind of going back and forth. Um, has she, the parent that needs some co-parenting class, but they may be found that by now. Is that what Miss Peterson, have they found it? Yes, ma'am, they have. They've had two sessions last week. So they've come to some understandings and some agreements. Okay. Outlined. Okay. So uh, it's my understanding that we just need to rock along on the case a little bit longer, get them to work co-parenting, do the kind of back and forth unsupervised weeks or however y'all have it worked out and then just kind of monitor that for a little bit longer. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Harris, Ms. Shell, Ms. Dowd, do y'all have any questions for uh, Ms. Uh, also? Uh, no, I do. Ms. Peterson. Sorry, too early in the morning. Ms. Peterson. <laughs> no? Okay. I do. I, I do, Judge. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Go on, Ms. Peterson. Go on. See, I did call you the wrong name. Go on, Ms. Shell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Peterson, uh, right now, now, I represent mom. So, Ms. Caballero, she has two days a week that are at her residence, and the other five days she spends at, um, or is she, go is she already doing more than that? She's already doing more than that. So, at this point, right. she's uh, in December, we stepped it up. So, it was the agreement. Um, I sent that to all legal attorneys um, three, three days the first week, and then four days, and she's at four days. And we're asking at this court report to be fully returned back the seven days a week. So that's what Judge Mabry just said, that they would alternate, but they would be at mom's unsupervised on her weeks. Is that correct, okay. Judge? Sorry, yes, I wasn't logged on, so I didn't hear that. So I was just clarifying that we're all on the same page. Sounds like we okay. are. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Judge Mabry? Yes, sir. Um, I'm here for the Thornberry uh, hearing. I was told I was going to go back into the waiting room, but I'm still here. Okay, thank you. I'll put you back. Thank you. Technology sometimes, or, or the operator era. Hold on. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, I can't find you on my list. That's weird. There you are. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Miss Peterson? Okay, Mister Herman. According to your report, you you probably agree with that plan, correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. I agree. Okay. Um. Okay. We started this case on 8 15 23, and I believe it's only supposed to go six months. Is that correct, Miss Also? Yes, Your Honor, with the new rules, it is only supposed to be six months. Okay. So that'll get us to what, February 15th? Yes, Your Honor. Do we want to go on and set this for the a next hearing in our only hearing in February? On It's February 6th, and hopefully we can just dismiss at that time. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Hart, Ms. Dowdle, how do y'all feel about that? I'm, uh, I'm good I'm with that, Your Honor. I'm in favor of that, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Alsop, if everybody's ready to dismiss ahead of time, uh, just send me a motion to dismiss, and that will be, that'll work, because no reason to have a hearing, get everybody here, if everybody's, if everybody agrees that everybody's in compliance, and we can, we can just go along that way. I'll do that, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor, I'm sorry, I didn't get, I, I didn't speak up loud enough. Uh, for I had a quick question for Ms. Peterson. Okay, I'm sorry, Ms. Harris. Ms. Peterson. That's okay, Ms. Peterson. Um, there is an existing uh, custody order, correct? Correct. Yes, ma'am. Is it everybody's intention that even though that custody order exists, that we're going to maintain this seven on seven off kind of a program? Um. So the parents at this time, they'd like to do that, but they, they do have a actual custody order um, in place. Okay. That's but different the, from. Okay. But is it your understanding that they intend to maintain the seven days of peace? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No further questions, Judge. Uh, what is the custody order say, y'all? I didn't hear you. What does the custody order, uh, who has primary or is mom. it 50 /50? Mom does. Mom does, but I think everything's going well with the seven and seven, and I think we'll be able just to enter an agreed order. 
Okay. Like an agreed modification? Are, are we going to modify that? I think it has to be modified. <clears throat> I, I don't know if anybody filed a motion to modify. I, I, I haven't only because this is a, a it, since it's not a TMC case, uh, it's my understanding that we would need to file a whole new uh, petition to modify in order for that to occur. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that will fall with Judge Mabry or not now. And Your Honor, I have spoken with the department about that particular issue. If a motion to modify needs to be done, it cannot be done in this case since this is a court order participation case. Okay, let me tell you all what we've done before. And uh, Ms. Miller did this, Mr. Baker, and it's it's opposite of what Ms. Alsop said, but anyway, I'll tell you all anyway. We did. We had a case like this, and we transferred the SAPSER into this case, and so we just had one cause number, and then I signed an agreed motion to modify, agreed order on modification. Everybody understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Michelle, I'll get with you about that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and everybody agreed, you know, so it wasn't like anybody was having a big fit over it. It was all agreed. So we just need to consolidate. Y yeah, but you know what? I wouldn't consolidate. I didn't I didn't let them consolidate until we had an assign had a signed modification agreement, you know, because, okay. you know, I just didn't want to have a big old mess. But I did I did allow for attorney fees, et cetera, costs of state on, uh, and light of state on, you know, just to make sure that the, the language of the modification was appropriate. So, Miss also just don't tell anybody. <laughs> yes, Judge. It, it accomplished a good goal. It was easier for the clients, we thought. And as long as everybody's in agreement, Judge, I don't see a problem with it personally. Absolutely. That's about the way I thought, too. And it was a much more contentious case than this one. So, okay. Well, so if we're going to do that, everybody has until, uh, you know, what I say. Oh, y'all don't know yet. Our next hearing, our next day in Vernon is 2-6. Okay. So I'm anticipating either an agreed modification order with a uh, motion to consolidate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or a dismissal. Okay, and uh, Ms. Leon, can you see if you can come on February 6th? Yes, Your Honor, I'd be glad to. At what time? Uh, I'll just set you at nine o'clock if that's easy for you. It's better if it's later in the morning. Okay. Uh, Let's do like how late? Noon or uh, let's can you do eleven forty five? Yes, perfect. Okay. <gasps> Mr. Caballero just logged on. Yeah. Well uh I'll, okay. let me do this. Why don't so I can go on and continue with the docket. Why don't I put uh Michelle, Miss Miss uh Harris and the clients and Miss Leone in a breakout room, and y'all can visit and tell the clients what we talked about. Is that okay with y'all? And Miss Alsop too, and Mr. Hart. Basically, I just move y'all aside, and, and Miss Dowdle's going to stay with me because she's on the adversary hearing at eight thirty. Okay. 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 So Miss Leone, you're going. It's going to be kind of a just a chat. Okay. You can y'all can go slow so Miss Leone can interpret. That'll be great. He's in the breakout room. Okay. Anything else? Your Honor, I'm on Thornberry. Are you going to be calling that? No, I got to do Simon's. Okay. okay. Uh, Ms. Fowler, Ms. McClure, Ms. Dowdle, Ms. Fanna, do we have an agreement? Um, I think Ms. Natalie Fowler said that yes. Um, and I believe Melissa McClure's client is not here, but she's not contesting anything. Okay. Um, well, I think the agreement is for TMC to the department um, at this time. Um, I'm, I haven't spoken with Natalie Fowler since she spoke with her client. Um, I think that he's in custody right now, so I don't know what type of services he can begin at this time. Um, so maybe the proper action would be to do a family group conference um, and build a service plan um, instead of ordering a bunch of services today. Yes, Your Honor. And I wanted to just um, say that I spoke with uh, Mr. Simons and he is not contesting the removal today. However, he did not want this court to see that as um, an admission or an agreement that the facts in the affidavit are, are set out totally accurately. And so um, I let him know that the court would not infer that um, just that he's in custody and he's not in a position right now to receive his son. Um, but uh, if that changes, we can always set it for a temporary hearing and um, and ask that uh, placement be with him. 
but, and we're also okay with family group conference being set up so we can see what services he might be able to participate in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Ms. Fowler. Okay. Um, anything else? I don't even think um, visitation um, at this time would occur due to his incarceration. I think that the department can set up a, we can do a visitation plan and talk about a visitation plan at the family group conference and um, that everybody can work together to develop that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thomas, do you or anybody in your family or in Ms. Davis's family have any Native American heritage that you're aware of? Or, or grandparents, do y'all know of any? Y'all are muted. You can unmute yourself. While she's trying to unmute herself, spark her with the grandparents, y'all. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Uh, Simons, if you can just nod, do y'all have any American and Native heritage in your background? Yes or no? Yes? It looked like his mom was trying to say that she did. She pointed to herself. Is it possible for Angelica to unmute her? I don't know. Can you unmute them, Angelica? Miss Simons, Miss Virginia Simons, do you have Native American heritage in your background? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am, and my grandfather. Do you know what tribe, ma'am? I don't offhand. Okay. Do you know if your your father or grandfather are um are registered members? No, ma'am. Okay. Would you be able to get that information for us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And while we're on that subject, um, <clears throat> did the last case that we had with Parker, did it end in a final order or a dismissal? It ended with a final order judge. And in fact, I did file a motion <clears throat> to consolidate. Um, so I'm asking the court to grant that consolidation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Fanna? No, Your Honor, we'll put the standing language in the order for drug testing, um, but it's my um, it's my understanding he's unable to do that at this time. So, okay, okay, Ms. McClure, besides the client, what do you need? Um, I, I have spoken to my client. Um, uh, I was finally able to talk to her earlier this month. Um, I, it sounds like she's not in a position to step in and and do a lot right now. Um, I, I uh, I'm keeping her apprised of the developments and. Um, I believe she has a criminal case pending in Bell County at the moment. Um, don't know what that's going to end up looking like, but um, I'll keep her uh, updated about everything and see if at some point she wants to try to participate in this case. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fowler? Nothing more, Your Honor. Just I'm um, hoping to find some things he can do until he's able to bond out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Costa, uh, Ms. McClure, yes. I forgot to mention, if I don't get an application signed and returned to me, is this a situation where I just kind of wait and see what happens? Or do you want me to let you know that I'm not getting it back and, and take me off? I want you to hang, I want you to hang around. Okay, thank you. And I put the standard language. Thank you for bringing that up. I have that the court appointed attorney applications are due in 10 days with the attorneys of a piece. <clears throat> I understand this is a little bit different situation than usual. So just, I just need to put a deadline on it. And Your Honor, because he's in custody, will he automatically qualify or do you need me to do that application? I still, I still need one. Okay. Has some time that has some good information on it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Costa, I don't, I don't think we have an advocate on the case. You don't see one. Uh, Ms. Gilson, what do you need? Uh, we don't have an advocate. Well, I have one that's committed this morning, but no, we don't have one yet. You need anything? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Ms. Dow, you good? I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, after today, as Ms. Fanna said, there'll be a meeting called the Family Group Conference, and that's where she developed so we can uh, work on getting getting out of the case. Um, Ms. Simons, you have you will have a service plan. You have to comply. Your parental rights could be subject to termination. Do you understand, sir? Okay. Um, Y'all, we need to talk about this the next court date. Uh, Ms. Trinidad put it for February 6th. That's a really bad day, and I have to leave early. So how if we do it on zoom on the 26th it's a monday everybody i mean i'm probably gonna have to or we could do it on the 27th 
that's a burn it day, but I'm, it's going to have to be by Zoom. Anybody have any opposition to that? No, Your no. Honor. Okay. Okay, Ms. Vanna, just put that as a backup burn it day on your calendar via Zoom. Yes, Judge. February 27th at 9 a.m. Yes, ma'am. And that's the status hearing for this case, February yes. 27th? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Okay, because that gives us a little bit more time. Okay, well, good luck to everybody. Glad Parker does his great parents and rocking along. And uh, we'll see y'all February 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Judge, may I have, may I be excused for three minutes? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right back. Three. That's awfully specific. I know. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, this is our status hearing. Um, I have the kiddos are with the maternal grandparent, maternal grandmother in Marble Falls, look close by, um, that things are kind of are going well. I did not get a CPS report, though. I got a cost report, so everything's based on the cost report. So uh, we need to go approve the service plan, and Ms. Vanna, that's what I have today, so you may begin. Thank you, Judge. Um, the service plans and a report was filed. Maybe it wasn't emailed to you, Judge. I'll just make sure um, in the future, Ms. Um, Donnell um, and Ms. Martin, if you could just... Um, email the judge the report as well and include all parties. Thank you. Um, it looks like everybody has started their services um, and that everything's going well. The department is not asking for any for that service plan to be modified. We did have an agreement at the adversary for visitation that mom would move in with the grandparents and, you know, have some, I guess, sandwich visits. Um, apparently, it's my understanding that that has not occurred, that mom decided not to move in um, with Ms. Fowler's shaking her head no. She moved in, right? I think before Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, and so we're just asking that the service plan, service plans be made in, be made in order of the court judge um, and that we set an initial permanency hearing. Um, Ms. Martin, is there anything else that um, has changed since your last, since your court report? Can you unmute yourself, please? I'm sorry. No, ma'am. Nothing's changed since the court report went in. Okay. Was it your understanding that Miss um, that the mother has not moved in with with her parents? It is my understanding that she's not moved in full time. She doesn't spend the night there as often as what was planned. Okay. And where did you get this information, Miss Martin? I got that from um, K Hall. Okay. Um, are there any other services that you believe need to be ordered in this case? No, ma'am. Okay. And have the parents and the caregivers started all of their services? Yes, ma'am. All services have been started. Everything's going great. Okay. No further questions. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Martin? No, no y'all can only ask questions. You can text your lawyer and ask them, ask them <laughs> if you have to relay your question to them. Uh, Ms. Fowler, any questions? No, Your Honor, I'd just like to update the court on services, but I don't have any witness questions. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bennett, questions? Um, I mean, I can update or ask questions. It's We can update because we're late, so hold okay. on. Okay. okay, anybody else have any questions, Ms. Martin? Okay, yes. well. Yes, Judge, yes, one quick one. Ms. Martin, yes. have, have the grandparents been able to start their protective parenting course? Yes, they have. That's it, Judge. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Ms. Vanna, what else do you need today? Nothing, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Fallon. Um, yes, Your Honor, my client did move in with her parents. I don't know if she has spent every single night since um, Thanksgiving. Um, I know Mr. Thornberry lives close by, um, but she indicated to me that she moved in before Thanksgiving. I saw Ms. K. Uh, Hall shake her head in confusion at the suggestion that she that um, Rebecca has not moved in. So uh, maybe we can ask her what the issue there is. But it is my understanding that Rebecca Hall has moved in with her parents and with the boys and things are going really well. She started therapy with Deb Tabor. She started that on December the 6th, which is including her protective parenting and her nurturing parenting. She did an OSAR with no recommendations. She continues to test negative or she continues to test weekly. She's positive for methadone, but she has a prescription for that. I did ask her about her plan on methadone because I had spoken to the department about that. Her plan is to wean herself off. She has progressively been um, reducing 
um, the amount and she's working with a doctor at that clinic to, um, to get off of methadone. Um, but um, she's not there yet, but she does have an appointment to further decrease um, her, her amount. Uh, she has her psychological uh, scheduled for the end of this month and she intends to follow recommendations. Um, she has unsupervised time at the home so that the parents can go and do whatever it is they need to do. Um, because she is testing negative weekly without fail, um, because she is maintaining her job at Home Depot and has for years, um, and uh, there have been no issues or safety issues, I am asking that she be allowed to start up to two hours unsupervised outside of the home um, and to help transport the boys. She is she has a valid driver's license. She has a legal car with um, registration and insurance. And um, that was one of the things I believe I read in CPS, uh, CPS is maybe it was a CASA report um, that there are a lot of appointments and after school activities for Colton and getting um, the little one Caleb to and from daycare and stuff like that. So um, that is our only request today is that uh, is um, regarding visitation that she be allowed to start two hours outside of the home, um, which includes transporting the boys so long as she um, continues to test weekly and she maintains a valid driver's license with a legal car. Um, I know that um, that there will probably be a request for increased bit of visits for um, Mr. Thornberry. Um, I know that that has been a little bit shaky um, due to schedules and stuff. Um, and Ms. Hall says that she feels comfortable supervising if needed to increase his visitation. Um, they haven't had any issues as far as um, them getting along or any negative behaviors toward each other. And so that's our request today, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hall. I'll get back, let me hear it from everybody else and I'll answer your questions. Um, Ms. Bennett. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. Um, so my client has started everything. He did his OSAR. He's currently in the IOP. Um, he's just, uh, he's in nurturing parenting. He's in therapy. Um, he works at Goodwill every day, except that he's worked out that his days off are Tuesdays and Thursdays, because that's when he goes to IOP and protective parenting classes and all of that which is all from like 5.30 to 8 or 6 to 8 at night. So he doesn't get out until 8. Um, he usually gets off work sometime between 7 and 8, depending. Um, all of his UAs beginning November 6 to now have only been positive for the prescribed methadone. Um, he's in therapy with Tina Nunley. Um, he, he's, he's in everything. He's, um, restructured his work schedule and everything to be able to do his, his classes and stuff. Um, he's been providing diapers and paying for daycare and I have receipts for those. Um, his one um, request is just that he wants to be able to see his kids more, um, because he works, including works on weekends because he took his two days off to be the two days to go to CPS classes. Um, and of course, by the time he gets off at seven or seven thirty or eight out of classes or off, it's kind of late when they're little and need to go to bed for school. So, um, <clears throat> the best time for him to be able to see him really is on his Tuesday and Thursdays that he's off, like before, after he gets out of school, but before he has to go into his first class at like five thirty. um, that's why he was asking if he could have like a either a short unsupervised visit during that time frame or if Ms. Hall, Rebecca Hall could supervise him or something. I think um, I think the grandparents work and so they're at work during those times. <laughs> OK, thank you. I wrote that down, too. So uh, cost anything else, Mr. Cox? What do you think about what the lawyers have said? Anything else that you need that's not in your report? Uh, I think overall things are going really well. I think the boys are doing well, being well cared for. Um, if I was to nitpick, I, one of the temporary orders was that a, a log of date and times of, of supervised visits be kept. And I, I don't think that's happening. I don't think that's a big deal as long as they have been supervised by John and Kay. I think um, they do a good job. But if we're moving towards something unsupervised, I think just making sure that uh, log of date and times of visits is being kept. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Okay. And Judge? Uh, yes. Yes. 
I see you, Mr. Hall. Ms. Vanna. Yes, Judge. Um, and in our agreement for visitation, it did include there that visits shall increase and supervision shall decrease by agreement of CPS and the ad litems, um, I guess, and or further orders. Um, and so, I mean, the department is okay with increased visits. However, um, we're still not comfortable with Ms. Rebecca Hall supervising. Ms. Rebecca Hall supervising Mr. Yes. Mr. Is that how, how yes. Answer? So mom just supervising dad. <clears throat> Okay, let me ask a question. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hall, I'll get to you in just a second. Ms. Harris, I haven't forgotten you. Are the parents together as a couple? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. They had never they never broke up or insinuated that they had. She simply moved in because Colton was having a hard time and to help the parents out. And I did just get a text from my client. She says that she has spent every night at the home with the Halls. Uh, she's okay. moved in. There's no question about that. Okay, Mr. Hall, what would you like to say before I get to Ms. Harris? Okay, uh, Rebecca was staying overnight. There was confusion at, at first. She thought that we didn't want her coming over when she was working late nights, uh, disturbing the boys or whatever. <clears throat> we have dogs and they'll, they'll, they'll go barking. But yeah, she's been spending the night and everything. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we, we do have a log. Um, either I'll take pictures of when I arrive at, at their house and then Kay writes it down and everything. And then when I leave. So we do have a log of, of the visitations. Good. Okay. That's a great. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Harris, what do you think about everything? I think things are going pretty well, Your Honor. Um, I am okay with mom getting some unsupervised time as long as she understands that she's not to let the kids see dad while she's got that time. Um, I'm okay with increasing some for dad. You know, he's been having clean drug tests. Um, I I'm okay with, with grandmother supervising that as long as they are logged. Okay. Well, you Other know, than that, kids are doing good. Okay, and we're just at a status hearing, y'all. So we y'all have more visitation now than probably 99.9% .9 of the people that we have in court do at this point in the caseload. So that tells me that things are going really well and that's good and everybody's working and playing well together. So um, that being said, I'm gonna improve, approve the service plan, make it order of the court. Uh, what I'm going to write down is uh, caregivers keep a log of the dates and times of visitation. It sounds like the halls are already doing that. Um, I agree with Ms. Vanna. I'm going to let y'all increase visits and decrease uh, supervision as y'all can agree to, because we're not coming back. Our next hearing is April 2nd. So, you know, we can do a lot more increased visitation between now and then, as long as everybody's service plan compliant. Okay. Um, everybody get out pens and I'll give you our court dates. <clears throat> like I said, our next hearing is our first permanency hearing. It's 4224. Second permanency hearing is 7224. Final trial, if we get that far, it's 10124. And our dismissal date is 102824. Parents, y'all have service plans. You have to comply. Your parental rights could be subject to termination. Y'all already know that. But y'all are doing great. Things are going fast. Kids sound like they're doing well. Uh, Colton has a lot of activities. I'm happy that he's in activities and not just sitting there on his phone or his pad or blah, blah. So that's good. Grandparents, I know that's a lot of work for y'all, but we appreciate it. And I'm sure y'all are like me. Y'all don't like these kids just being on their devices all the time. So, uh, Miss, Miss Hall, when you're over there at your parents, like I told you at the last hearing, you know, don't just sit there in the lazy boy and, you know, take a snooze. You need to be helping your, your parents and washing clothes if they tell you to fix dinner or go clean up the kids' rooms or, you know, go, go pick vegetables in the garden, you know, whatever they want you to do, I need you to do it, okay? And Mr. Thornberry, when it's time for you to come out there and do the same, you go. Okay, uh, Miss Miss Bennett, your client has a question. Yeah, I, I think what he's going to say is just that I, even increasing his visits doesn't help because he hasn't even been getting the amount of time he's supposed to get because of his work schedule and CPS schedule. I mean, and the, like I said, the halls are at work during the only time he really has available to see the kids except for late at night. Well, so y'all have to work it out. I mean, it just have to, I mean, we're not going to take Colton out of school, you know, maybe no. we could see Caleb, you know, Caleb's one, maybe we could see Caleb, you know, during the day sometimes. So uh, I think y'all can work it out. Your Honor, to be clear, um, Ms. Hall will be able to have her um, her unsupervised outside of the home and transport the boys. Is that okay with the court? 
I thought Miss Vanna said that somebody said they didn't want her to have any unsupervised right now. No, Judge, we just don't want her to supervise Mr. Christopher Christopher Thornberry. Okay. Um, she's having um, two hours unsupervised in the home um, at this time. Um, I think it might it, it's okay so long as she doesn't take the children around Mr. Christopher Thornberry. So she can have a, her up to two hours unsupervised outside of the home and be allowed to transport the boys to um, their activities. Okay. Yeah, she, and she knows right. that this will this will stop if she um, if there are issues with their testing or with being engaged in services. But I don't foresee that happening. I just wanted to give her a clear understanding here. Mom, two hours per day unsupervised. She must remain in Burnett County during that time, and she can help the, the grandparents transport the boys. And you know, I would like for Mr. Thornberry pretty soon to be able to do the same which sounds like that's going to be doable be on his days, but you know, we'll figure it out. Y'all figure it out. Okay. Well, good luck. Very, very, very good report. Y'all keep up the good work. And it sounds like we can be headed to a monitor return a lot quicker than usual too. So Mr. Thornberry, get at the same level as, as Ms. Hall. And, and that's, that's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all April 2nd. I'm at the truth. No excuse. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This is our first permanency hearing. Um, I have the dad is unknown. Uh, mom's not doing anything. Uh, is doing great. Miss Willis, uh, I love her clothes. She has on. Uh, I wrote down maybe mediation. I don't know. Maybe that's a little early, but since some of the court, they wanted to up the trial. Uh, Serenity is locally. Uh, locally with maternal grandma and things and that's where she's doing good at least so that's what i have miss vanna what do you need today judge um we're just asking that all the orders continue um as previously ordered um because mom is not participating in services um we do have an unknown father in this case and um miss sonia wright represents him and mr kenneth chittam the department also had um Let's see, one, two, three, four other, um, well, five alleged fathers. We have served four of them. We have not served Mr. Kenneth Chittum, which I believe is why Miss Sonia Wright was appointed to him to try to assist in locating him. It looks like Mr. David Linville is here today. Um, he was recently added to our petition, and we would ask the court for an order to um, for DNA testing on Mr. David Linville. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Cummings, what do you need today? Your Honor, I would be in agreement for mediation as whenever it's practicable due to the unknown fathers. Okay, let me, let me see something real quick. Okay. Um, and Ms. Cummings, you know where your client is? Part, part of the time I do, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wright, let's see. I have, we didn't, we didn't write down that you're representing Mr. Linville. Let's see. Are you? I don't, I wasn't clear on that judge, um, but he reached out to me. I don't know why or how, but I just told, he said, you know, that he indicated he wanted to get DNA tested and, and get involved in this child's life. It sounds like he's not aware, wasn't aware that the child existed. Um, and so I told him to appear today and we'd get that DNA test set up and go from there. Um, as far as Mr. So at our permanency conference, um, the mom did show up and she said that she thinks that Mr. Chittam is the dad, like that's the one she thinks it is. Um, and so I reached out, she gave me the contact information through Facebook of his brother and I found both of them on Facebook and sent them both messages um, and they just don't respond at all, even though they're active on their pages. Um, I believe Mr. Chittam also has a warrant out for his arrest uh, that Morgan sent me that same day. So I think maybe that's why he's not wanting to come to court or participate in the case. So I am still trying to, you know, reach out to him. But Facebook is really the way to go if you're if they have an active page, you know, and they're posting, they'll get the message. Um, but he's just not responding. OK, thank you. Uh, Mr. Linville, can you show your face? Unmute yourself and show your face. 
Judge, Ms. Wright was not appointed to Mr. Linville. We recently, like maybe a week ago, um, put him, added him to our petition. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can we see? I, just, uh, I was trying to look for an older phone or whatever. For some reason, my front camera is not working. Okay. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Linville, I'm going to order you to do DNA so we can say you either are or you aren't the father, okay? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a permanent address that you can give to Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, Casa, what do y'all, y'all need anything? Uh, not really. Um, uh, Grandma is doing a great job and the baby's growing and uh, starting to really be quite active. So she's doing well. Great. Okay, good. Yay. Uh, Miss Willis, what else do you need today? Uh, I don't need anything. Did, did everybody see the beautiful pictures that uh, Donna sent me? I sent them out on email yesterday. Uh, she's doing really well. Uh, I did talk to grandma yesterday about the fact that this is her daughter. And if this ends up being a long term thing, can she be protective and make sure that <clears throat> the child comes first? And, and I, I'm very comfortable with um, the fact that she's putting the baby first. I, I think the baby is doing really well. She was preemie, but other than that, she has no problems as far as I, I know. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I don't need anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Linville, if it is found that you are the father, you will have a service plan and you have to comply with your service plan. Yes, okay. Our next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the trial and make the next hearing a hearing slash final trial just so we can kind of see where we are parent-wise, DNA-wise, where the mother is. If she's MIA, there's no reason to drag this out more because she's not doing her service plan. So that's what we're going to do. Ms. Milloway? Miss um, Donna, did um, Faith get to see the baby like we had talked about? Did she follow through uh, Christmas Eve? You're muted. Are you saying yes? She sent a message that she can't hear anything. Oh, okay. But she did tell me that that there was a visit. Okay. Uh, but I don't know that it was, it was Christmas. I think there was one visit. There's only been one visit. Was there a visit before yeah, that? Yeah, we, we visited uh, Christmas Day after I got home from work. So, Judge, I just wanted to share with everybody. Uh, I know some of us were on the permanency conference. Not everybody was. Um, Mom is really struggling. Um, I really feel for her. She's really, really deep in addiction right now. She admits that. Um, I was able to send her some information, her and her mom, some information for rehab centers that she can just call and do an assessment over the phone. Um, she did indicate that she wasn't sure if she was ready to take that step. Um, she, you know, I, I, I guess she pulled at my heartstrings. I don't know, but I did allow her to have a one visit um, around Christmas time. The agreement was that she didn't use um, for 24 hours prior to the visit. She agreed to that. And then um, I left it up to Donna to determine whether or not she felt she was clean. Um, and if she wasn't, then the, er, there was no visit. Um, so it sounds like that went well. Um, I really, really was pushing her to call one of these rehabs. I think that she definitely, definitely needs to get some help or really she's not doing well at all. Um, so Hopefully she'll be ready to take that step soon, but I just wanted the court to know and everybody to know that um, she did get a visit around Christmas time. Okay, good. <clears throat> and mom to successfully complete uh, inpatient rehab. And I believe that was an order at the adversary as well, but I'll add that again. Okay, and I'll say bye, 4 to 24. And Judge, uh, I'll, I'll add to that. And Donna, please correct me if I'm wrong, but... um. My understanding is she really doesn't know how to take care of a baby at all. And she, when the baby cried or needed to change, she, is she did panicked maybe is the right word and yeah. passed her back to mom. Okay. Well, I understand. Okay. Well, we'll just see if she'll do rehab or see what's, I mean, maybe she might do a voluntary after for relinquishment. I don't know. It depends on if this coming can talk to her or, See where we're at. So, okay. Well, good luck to everybody. And like I said, our perm, at trial, perm hearing and trial is 4 2. Please Thank you. Hand. Do you swear to affirm the testimony you. you're about to give you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So, what you got? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, our first permanency hearing, 
I have that Miss Martinez is doing well. Dad. Uh, I think I wrote Dad has had four clean UAs. Uh, Isabella's with maternal great aunt and uncle in South Texas, but uh, things are kind of going okay. So that's what I have. Uh, I don't see Mr. Miranda here today, but Miss Martinez is here. So Ms. Fanny, you may begin. Thank you, Judge. Miss um, Martinez um, has started some some services. Um, she continues to drug test. She'd ha she's had some positive, negative, and, and, and positive for marijuana again. Um, and I think we just need to continue with services um, as they were ordered as she continues to make some progress. Um, we're looking into maybe consolidating some of her services that she has, um, maybe doing protective parenting and, and, and individual therapy um, and, and things like that. So the department will talk to, um, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Linville just asked a message to see if he is, um, if he can be excused. Yes. Um, and so we're just, we're asking everything to continue, Judge, um, and... I just wanted to update the court that at the last hearing, the court ordered that a home study be done on the paternal grandmother. Um, however, the grandmother said that she does not want a home study. So that was not conducted. Okay. Let's take that first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would like to call, um, oh, where's my caseworker? I don't see her. Um, Ms. Davison, can you please show yourself? She's can you hear me? with yes. her video um, yeah. and audio, we can get one or the other. Okay. Ms. Can Davis, you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, it's my video that's not working. Okay, since you filed your court report, um, is there anything else that you need to update the court with? Uh, Jorge was released on December the 11th. Since his release, he has continually tested negative and he also has um, started a job and I have lined out his services and I'm hoping this week that he makes contacts, contact with all of those and get started on that because he is willing to uh, participate. Okay, thank you. Does the department need any, any other orders from the court today? No, ma'am. Okay, I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Davidson? I do. Um, Ms. Davidson, do you have a um, phone number for Jorge? Uh, Yes, ma'am. Uh, would you please email that to me as soon as this hearing's over? Yes, ma'am. Um, and I believe that a home study had begun on his sister. Is that right? No, ma'am. It was um, asked that it be done on his paternal. There was some confusion. Um, right. It was not his uh, mother that wanted it. It was the aunt. So the right. order was written for the mother. So there's not been one done on the um, great aunt. Oh, so... The department's of the opinion that an order is needed before a home study can be done. Well, I've, I've not. There's not been one done. Why is that? I, I guess I'd have to ask Teresa. Can you um, help me? Because <laughs> the department has not um, started the home study on the great. It, I'm sorry, Marion. It's the great aunt. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, there are concerns with the background on the great aunt that we need to investigate further to see if a home study is even um, is even going to be allowed to, to happen at this time. There are CPS concerns as well as uh, criminal concerns on that individual. Okay. Well, I'm unclear as to who's testifying now, but whoever's testifying, please keep me informed. The last I heard was that one was being done on the ant, and I appreciate communication in my case. The, uh, okay, it's Teresa Donnell, Carrie. But you actually weren't the one that was supposed to be testifying. That's why I'm unclear of who's testifying. I believe that Ms. Davidson was testifying. Uh, yes, and I believe I did send an email stating those facts, and I'm almost positive you were included in that email. Okay, if you could just forward that back to me because I don't recall getting it and I'm pretty up to date on my emails. The last one I received was that the grandmother didn't want one and the aunt did. That's that's the last I've heard at all on this case. Yeah, but, 
Yeah, I believe that was a text. But then I did follow up with an email letting everyone know the concerns for the great aunt and what the confusion was. But okay. I'll go back. And I don't know I that I was it. included in everyone. So I'm asking that you forward that to me, please. Okay. And I will get his uh, phone number to you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on that matter? No. Okay. No, you're not. Okay. Ms. Van, anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Potts? No, Your Honor. We're good. Okay. Ms. Ward? Um, just some commun communication. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Casa? Anything y'all need to add? No? Okay, Ms. Wright, everything good with Isabella? And yes, the place? Judge. Everything's going well. Um, I understand the visit went well with mom. So we just need mom to, you know, stay clean and finish her services. Okay. I'm going to, the only order I'm going to change is I'm going to vacate the uh, hair, str hair strand. So it's the HS, the home study on the paternal grandmother. And uh, Ms. Martinez, sounds like things are going really well. You have a service claim. You have to comply. Your parental rights with the subject termination. Our next hearing is our second permanency hearing, and it's April 16th, okay? That's a long way, so keep up the good work, ma'am, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank y'all. Yay. Go back to my page. I read the report. Uh, I think Mr. Bowden is the adoption worker on it. Ms. Taylor Cruz was the caseworker. Uh, the boys are with relatives in Burnett County. Uh, maternal aunt and uncle, and looks like they're all rocking along doing good. Ms. Hannah, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the department doesn't need any new orders for these kiddos. Um, just last week, the case was transferred to adoptions. So it went from Ms. Marcy De La Cruz to Mr. Bowden. Um, so Ms. De La Cruz is here to testify just in case the court needs any any other information. But I think that um, we'll be going, they'll be negotiating subsidies hopefully soon and we'll progress to an adoption. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Casa, what do y'all need today? Nothing at this point, just let's get them adopted. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, I'm looking at court dates. Uh, let's see, Ms. Sanchez, Ms. Sanchez, Ms. Willis, what do you need? Talking about a different case. Oh. Ms. Willis, what do you need on O'Bannon? I guess nothing. Uh, Mr. Bowden, anything adoptions needs? Uh, no, ma'am. I'll go out and meet with the family in the next week or so and get subsidies started. Um, I'll probably need to get a couple of letters from uh, children's doctors. Uh, and other than that, we should be able to get this done in the next 60 to 75 days. Yeah, good. Okay, well, I'm going to set the next perm after hearing for 416, but it sounds like we can get it done before then. Yes, ma'am. I should be able to. Okay. okay. Well, everything continue. Our next hearing in Urbana is 416. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, thank uh, you. May I be dismissed? Yes, sir. Thank you. And um, I'll see I'm you about one o'clock. Okay. Uh, and okay. uh, is Janelle here? Okay. Sounds like she's kind of doing okay in her place in Florida. I know she wants to try to leave or get out or go to a foster home. There's been discussion about her. Uh, finishing the program there, which I think is probably a really good thing. And I uh, read about the visitation. Sometimes her sister shows up, sometimes she doesn't. And um, everything is, uh, conversations go through uh, Kaylee's therapist, which is, is good. And that's what I got. So Ms. Vanna, what do you need today? Your Honor, um, the department doesn't need any new orders. We would like to just continue um, as is. Um, the department would like to see Callie complete the program. She's she's doing very well. Um, she's got some ups and downs, but I think that is normal. So we're just asking for all orders to continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Butte, anything you need to add that went in your report? Uh, she did not make level three. She had some downturns and has continued to act out with some self-harming and uh, some destruction of property. Uh, I think that the calls with her sister are not real beneficial for her uh, at every two weeks. It's, 
it's very difficult to get her sister on the phone and she just doesn't seem to have much interest in talking to her, although she says she does. She doesn't show that she does. And I think it's it's hard on Callie. Uh, yet Callie would like to talk to her, but I would like some leeway to, I've told her sister she has to sit down to place herself and not be walking all over the house, inside, outside, and around other people. Uh, I, I think I would like to make the calls as a, a reward for Callie when she behaves. So if she's misbehaving and she's on restriction now, if she's doing that, she doesn't get to make the call. I don't know. Maybe that'll help her. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Miller. Um, yes, Your Honor, I'd agree with uh, Ms. Butte. I mean, we're every time we get close to a um, a level three, or I don't really think we're very close to a successful discharge, we have a step back in terms of behavior. So, I mean, I've been trying to look at her behavior in terms of a symptom of something that, that may be wrong. However, I just can't pinpoint what that would be. Um, I know that she's disappointed in the calls with her sister, but that can't be the reason for her, um, you know, escalating behaviors. There was at some point there was a discussion of of her being unsuccessfully discharged from the facility. And we haven't heard anything about that in, a, I guess, about a week or so. Um, but um, it, it does seem to just be self-sabotaging behavior in terms of her um, reaching a level three or getting a successful discharge at this point. Uh, Ms. Miller, does she know that I've said she's not going to get out of there until she completes the program? She knows that very well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay well, Ms. Vanna uh -huh. had her hand raised. Okay. I had a question um, for Casa. I'm just wondering, are these behaviors occurring um, soon after her calls with her sister? I'm just wondering, does there appear to be any correlation between the, the calls and her behavior? I don't, I don't know that they do correlate. I know that her behavior as soon as she's ready to reach a, le a new level, level three, or get off some restrictions, she acts out. She self-sabotages self a change, I think. Although she says she wants a change, maybe she's afraid of a change as well. That's all I have. Well, I like Ms. Butte's idea about uh, phone calls with sisters agreed upon versus on good behavior. I like that. So it's that's worth a try. Excuse me? It's worth a try. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, did I read in the report that the sister's kind of going down a bad road, too? I'm afraid so. That's not good. Uh. Okay, well, we'll just add that one thing and we'll have a next hearing on 416 on about mm, three months, see where we're at. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank, thank you, Judge. You. Yes, thank you. Tell Helen, uh, Helen, Kaylin. I still know. Okay, I read the report. Um, we all know Lexi's behind in school a lot. She's at a, sounds like a group home in Richmond. Um, Or I wrote down CWAP in Waco. I don't know why. Maybe she was there and then she went to Richmond. Um, I wrote down maybe CFE by CASA. I don't know. We've already done that. But it doesn't sound like she's going to go home anytime soon. So uh, that's what I have today. Ms. Ms. Van, what do y'all have need? Judge, um, first, um, I'd like to update the court regarding her med review. She actually had a med review December of 20, uh, 2023 so that um, the department so that she is in compliance with the statutory requirements of getting evaluated every 90 days. Um, it looks like everything she was in CWAP briefly and a placement was found for her and then she was moved to her current placement. Um, uh, it's my understanding that she's attending school um, and just because everything is on campus. So she doesn't have to leave. Everything's provided there. Um, it looks like she needs an eye exam. And so the department is going to schedule an eye exam for her to get contacts because she doesn't want glasses. She wants contacts. Um, and then other than that, um, we're just asking that all the court orders remain as they are. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Lang, what do y'all need? 
Thank you, Judge. Um, we want to find out what the options are for um, the family to go down and visit, if that's going to be something, what that looks like. Um, Mr. Quintero is open to getting down there um, at least once a month, whatever everyone agrees is in the best interest of um, Lexi. He does not, he can't drive on interstates. So um, I would propose, I'm happy to transport if perhaps CASA or other parties could take a month and we could alternate months to help them if it's allowed so she can maintain some family in-person connection. Hold they on. weren't able to, go Hold ahead. I, I go to Richmond a lot. You can get there without going on an interstate. So you don't okay. have to go and you got to go on, uh, you know, if you have to go on 71, but that's not an interstate. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, no, I'm not buying that. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. I'm just trying to judge the message. This The message is judge that open and willing to visit, just need to know what the rules are and what everybody would agree to. Also, he'd like to know if he's, she is actually calling and talking to grandma, but he doesn't know if he's trying to call her because it may show up as a spam. He's not picking that up. So he'd like to be able to call her if he's allowed to have the phone number to the facility. He also wants to know if she needs any clothes or personal care items at this point in time. And if uh, there is a recommendation for her to, if she's in therapy and the therapist believes that it would be helpful for her to have sessions with him involved, Mr. Quintero is willing to do that as well. We just need to have good, clear communication to know what you guys are learning and hearing and seeing. And Rudy will step in and um, try to fill some of those gaps. Okay, thank you. Uh, Casa, what do y'all need in addition to what's in your report? Well, I'm concerned that she has two criminal cases, so I'm not sure about that. The last time she was in a public school, and I was on the understanding that the school was not on campus. If somebody can let me know if that's different, um, Maria probably knows about that. But I was told that the school was not on campus, and that is a concern. Don't know how to address that. I'm just pointing that out um, because she had great difficulty in um in, in the Denton placement with school, with not just truancy, but um, also with destructive behavior. And um, when I talked to him, she had just arrived there. Uh, she's disinclined to talk to me unless it benefits her. Um, so she is missing some uh, things in Denton. And I was able to find out about those from, from her Christmas gifts and I'm working on getting those back to her in Richmond, but um, she doesn't really like my honesty. So there you um, have it. Yeah. Um, okay, Ms. Henry, is it on campus or off campus, public school? It's actually off campus. They are, all the kiddos in the home are taken by bus. They go off campus to school for their regular school day. They get off of school and if there is an activity that requires them going to the library or some other thing that they need to do um, they'll take them directly from school go to the library and then back to the placement um, i spoke to her yesterday and um, she seems to like the placement i think at first she like any place lexi tests the limits when she first gets there um, she doesn't trust easily and she understands and acknowledges that she made some poor decisions in the last few months um, however, she also stated that she maybe didn't like the routine and structure at first, but she does, in fact, like the placement. She likes that the staff is trying to engage with her. Uh, she knows that she has given them a bit of a hard time trying to get to know her. Um, so we just had a long conversation about that. But as of right now, I think the way I understood it is she has levels. And so I'm not perfectly clear on it. So please forgive me if I don't quote it perfectly, but I think like if you're on a red level or a red team, then you're not able to do the activities that they have set up for them or to leave campus. So everything is, is based on a reward system and a privilege system. So you have to earn and maintain your behaviors and your, your schoolwork in order to have those privileges, which we know from past Lexi does very well with a completely structured and predictable pattern. And so um, she is now on a green level, and she's been able to enjoy some of those off campus, like going to the YMCA, going to the library. Um, she's trying to do well in school so that she can gain, gain her phone back. So she has some attainable goals that she knows it's her that has to do the work for. Okay. Uh, Ms. Henry, while I have you here, and this was just kind of what popped in my head. I don't, I don't really know what I think about it. Of course, I wanted to talk to Ms. Gilson, Ms. Ward. Um, 
<clears throat> Do we need to cushion visits for the family based upon therapist's recommendation? Or do we need to do them anyway? Uh, what, what do you think about that? So in speaking to Lexi yesterday, um, she, she, of course, still wants to have communication with her grandma and with her dad. But there are a lot of feelings from this last time, emotions and feelings uh, from this last time that she was there. Um, Lexi kind of comes back to the place where she worked really hard to get her level drop, to stay out of trouble, and so that she could go there and, and be with her family. She put in a lot of work for that and then got there and felt like she did not have the support from her family that she needed. Um, so at this time, she's not opposed to seeing them or visiting with them, but she also said that she'd like to focus on doing well for herself right now. Okay. Okay. We'll hold that thought then. Uh, anybody have any questions, Miss Henry? No. Okay, Miss Ward, what do you think about everything? I thought you were in a jury trial today. That's why I texted you yesterday so you would know I wasn't fibbing that um, Travis County Court was flooded and so court shut down today. You texted so, me yesterday? Yes, ma'am. You yes. even responded. <laughs> That was on a Miss Vanna tag. I thought she did that. Let me see. No, it was me and Miss Vanna responded. It was you and Miss Vanna, so you would both know that I was doing my own hearings today because Travis County flooded. <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't even see that part. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I saw about Miss what Miss Vanna had to do. Let me see. Oh, okay. I promise I'm not lying. No, I have it now. But I'll, <laughs> I, I, I didn't. When it came through, it was Miss Vanna's. I have a busy morning. That was the first <laughs> time I saw. I didn't see the rest. There you go. I was like, Judge is going to be so mad if I appear and I haven't told her why. So I'm going to make sure I yeah. tell her why. <laughs> yeah, because things kind of got changed because of you, <laughs> if I remember correctly, sort of, but it yeah. all worked. Okay. okay, well, so you're here. That's great. Yeah. That, that's fun. Okay, so go on. What do you think about all this? Um. I have to say that I am very disappointed in dad and grandma and their lack of effort. Um, while Lexi was there at the house, um, I don't think they really did anything for her. Um, they didn't drive her to the library. They didn't pick her up from the Y. They didn't, in fact, they didn't ensure she went to the library. And so she wasn't going to school because um, the library was where she was going to do school. Um, Fast forward to being in CWAP over Christmas, and they couldn't even find a way to go to Waco and see her, their child on Christmas or Christmas Eve or sometime to say Merry Christmas, I love you. Quite frankly, I'm kind of over it. I think Lexi's over it. I, I think if dad and grandma want to try, they can, but I don't think that any of the rest of us need to force the issue. And I don't think there's a chance like she's going back there. If you can't get to Waco, how can you get to Richmond? Right. It's not happening. So we can order that visits can happen or not happen. And either way, they're not going to happen. Well, then I think I'm going to say visits as agreed upon by CPS and Ed Lyons. Because I know that y'all will be talking to the placement and the therapy therapist to know to know. Yeah. And I think you can get to Waco without going on the interstate too. Never done it that way, but I think you can. Oh yeah, you can go to Gatesville and go crossover. Yes, I have done it before. Well, yes. Like I'm pretty sure I've done it before on accident by going through Gates, you know, on a long day. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that one. Um Miss Lang, did you have your hand raised? I do, Your Honor. If I may call Mr. Quintero to provide some clarification to the, the perception provided by Ms. Ward as to the incidents that happened at the house and the, the flexibility and the ability of the parent to help the child. Um, I think it's fair to give him a chance to say what he did. Okay. Is, okay go ahead, Mr. Quintero. I would take her to the library and stuff. And then sometimes uh, my mom, she had to walk because my mom don't got no license to drive, you know. And I would pick her up from the library. She'd go to the Y and I'd pick her up. Stuff like that. But sometimes I don't know why because I wasn't around. Where, where, where do they where do they live in relation to like where the square is? 
So they live right off, kind of off the square. Oh, six blocks. Six blocks from the square. And Rudy works in Georgetown. I work everywhere in Liberty Hill. He, oh, he works throughout Liberty Hill. He pours concrete for a living. And so the other piece is Maria Henry was gone quite a bit over the holidays during all this changing. And Rudy, why was it? Why didn't you make it up to Waco? What happened that you didn't go see her at the last place? Oh. Did you know the address of where she was? Yes, sir. Yes, I had the address. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you committed to be able to support her where she is now? If she wants to see you and the therapist recommends it and all the parties want you to be engaged, are you ready to yes, just spend more time with her? Okay. All right. Thank you, Judge. I have questions. Okay. Um, Mr. Quintero, um, would you agree that Ms. Jess Mystic was filling in for Ms. Henry the entire time that Ms. Henry was out? Would you agree? You're going to have to re-say it, Carrie. I'm sorry. Would you agree that Jessica Mystic was in communication with you the entire time Maria Henry was out of work? Jessica Mystic, did she call you while Miss Henry was gone? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And would you also agree that she contacted you and asked you to if you could go see Lexi at CWAP in Waco? I don't remember, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. I'll pass the witness. Okay. Any, hold on, Ms. Gilson. Any lawyers have any more questions, Mr. Katera? No. Okay. Ms. Gilson, what do you want to add? You're muted. I just wanted to add in terms of the library, the fact is, is Lexi got thrown out of the library and they, and that had nothing to do with Mr. Quintero or the grandmother. Lexi refused to do the work, um, refused to listen to anything that they said. She was in the wrong area, a lot of different things. But I just don't want to leave the impression that she, uh, you know, even if they took her, she was refused to be able to stay at the library. Right. She, I, I she's making that. a lot of poor choices. Yeah, I remember that from a while back, I believe. And I thought, why are you mean to the light? Why, why don't you mind the library ladies, you know? I, I didn't get that. Yeah, but it also kind of uh, leads to a lack of credibility there by the statement that he was taking her to the library since she only did go twice. Well, you know, teenagers are teenagers. You know, you can take them somewhere and they might go somewhere else, you know? I mean, just saying. Okay. I suppose if later on we need an evidentiary here and we can we can determine whether that's what happened, but okay. I don't think so. Uh, Carrie, I'm just reporting with the librarian, the head uh, librarian. Told. I know you don't like my client. It's okay. It's not that I do not like her. It's we, I it don't like what she does. In hearing. You can call me if you'd like, but we don't need to discuss this in a hearing. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of garbage on both sides. So, okay, what I'm going to order is visits per CPS and Little Adams. Okay, because I'm like I said, I know y'all will be talking to therapists. Instead of uh, Mr. Quintero uh, uh, providing personal effects, that's kind of, I mean, because I don't know how they're going to get there. It costs a lot to ship if you can even get stuff down there. I'm going to order Mr. Quintero to pay $225 per month. Child support beginning two one twenty four. Pay it to Miss Ward and Miss Ward. Then I want you to make arrangements. You or Miss Gilson or Miss Henry to make arrangements to provide. You know what Lexi needs. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And let me see. We'll have our next hearing on four sixteen. Unless we need to have one before. Um. Let me see something. How long can Lexi stay at this place? That's, sorry, that's something I'll have to check into. I don't necessarily think there was a time limit for this place as there was for like Blue Bonnet, where it was just a temporary shelter. Um, but I will find a definite answer and let everybody know. Well, because <clears throat> this is just my impression, but we've had a lot of hearings in this case. And a lot kind of just keeps, we just keep going in a circle, in my opinion. So I don't know how permanent, I mean, we need to find somewhere permanent for her because I'm not sure she's ever going to go home. 
I mean, I know we used to have a bunch of kids, a bunch of girls kind of similar situated at um, St. Jude's down in Boulevardy or Smithson Valley. I don't know if we can still do that anymore since they're in community-based care down there. But it was a cool play. I really liked it. Um, Miss Ward, you have a bunch of teenage girls. I mean, can y'all think of somewhere that maybe is a permanent place till she ages out or till she stays in extended care or something? One of the problems is that there aren't that many group homes. And um, I think it, I think at the end of the day, like it's going to be do better in a more like one-on-one -on -one environment. <coughs> um, and I think Ms. Henry and I have discussed that that might be the ultimate goal and it's, it's going to be looking for a unicorn. Um, but they exist. We just have to, when she's ready, we just have to look for that unicorn. Well, I have, <clears throat> I have one going on. I think another case. Hold on. Ms. Van, is it one of your cases? Oh, no, it's a Lampasas case. <clears throat> Ms. Millaway, a uh, bunch of emails yesterday on the case. Is that, you know who I'm talking about? Is, yes. is that type of place somewhere that Lexi could go? Um, in reading that home study, she does indicate that she does not want um, girls with really extensive behaviors. I think that that could be maybe a landing spot for her after she maybe completes some treatment where she's at right now and can show some improvements. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I don't know that she'd be willing to right now. Okay. Judge, I called you about a unicorn a couple of days ago and you asked me what the husband did and he helps with adolescents that have problems. I think it's primarily boys and he's a coach, but that's it. I'm not in, I, in this case, I'm a fly on the wall, but something to can look into. Why don't you text Miss Ward that information? Okay. And I'll maybe uh, Miss Milloway and see see if that's a something to consider. Okay. 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 Well, those are the orders of the court and we will see. I, I'm just going to kind of everybody be thinking about if you can find somewhere that y'all think somewhere permanent. Miss Ward, if you see something pop up and, you know, some of your places elsewhere. I think she's too old for New Horizons, isn't she? No? They won't they take her. Go ahead. Sorry. They, they won't take her because of her level. Um, there's there's a little caveat in there when you're reading about it. And I know I had reached out to them previously um, when they did have an opening, but her level didn't and her behaviors didn't align with what they were asking for um, at that time. Has she been to New Life before? I don't think so. Can you stay there? Oh, or is it, or is it when you, you leave when your levels decrease? Mm -hmm. Oh, can she not? Oh, maybe she's already been. She's been to settlement home. Settlement was not a good match for her, unfortunately. She got into quite a bit of discipline action and, and settlement, unfortunately. It was just not a good match. I don't remember that far back. Well, but you know, somewhere similar kind of like that would be uh would be a good idea. Yes, ma'am. Uh okay. Well we'll see y'all four sixteen if we don't if we don't have a visit before then. Thank y'all. The whole truth. Thank, Thank you. Truth. Thank you uh, Judge. Okay, Judge. okay, I read the report. Sounds like Emma's with her dad over in the Bell County area and her sister and they blow and go and do things. Uh not with her mom anymore. Um, her birthday is in five days, so she'll be a big 18 then. She does not want to continue in care, that she would be in trial independence. Um, the parents need, need to be released and just keep Miss Ward on through the trial independence period, and that everything's good. That's what I have. Miss Vanna, what do you need today? I think that's all we need as well, Judge. Um, Emma is she's with her dad, and then I think she's was or is visiting her mom for her birthday. So she's kind of going between both of the parents. I know we had a motion to modify on file, but we are not going to proceed on that. Um, we are going to let her age out of care. It's my understanding from the report that um, well, I'm going to ask Miss Brooklyn Gilmore um, to explain a little bit about what's going on. Um, 
Brooklyn, Miss Gilmore, will you please tell me if um, if you have worked with Emma to and what does SIL stand for? First um, it's sub sub. Oh my gosh, I can't say it's sub subsidized independent living. Um, is that and, something that Emma is interested in? Yes. So she um, did the application. We sent it over, and she got accepted to be into the program. Um, so we're in the middle of getting her um, accepted into an SIL. Um, so that's kind of a process, uh, and it takes a little bit of time, but, um, that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, and is she, um, does she understand that she's going to either need to go to school or have a job in order to remain in the program? Yes, she does. She's very much aware. Okay. Um, and so we are going to, I guess when she turns 18, go into trial independence. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you believe the court needs to know today that wasn't in your report? I don't think so. I think I put everything in there. The only new thing is the SIL. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Okay. If I have any questions, Ms. Gilmore. Just real brief. Um, Ms. Gilmore, are you um, assisting Emma in getting back into an education program so that she can help meet that requirement? Yes. So um, I am going to be sending her today, actually, um, the application for her to resend to get back into the online program. Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to get her to uh, get back into school. And that program is known to accept people back in, even if they've been kicked out for lack of participation. Is that right? That's what it sounded like. It sounded like they just wanted her to come back in the spring um, and her to actually be involved in the program or in doing her schoolwork. Um, what was holding her back was she didn't, she got rid of her computer, so she had no way to um, do her schoolwork. And she has one now. That's what I um, found out on Saturday, I think it was. Okay, thank you. That's all. No further questions. Okay, anybody else any questions, Ms. Gilmore? No. Okay, so she's going to do that <clears throat> and be in independent living. I mean, in uh, trial independence, correct? Yes, yes. Your Honor. Dad's good with her staying there? Or I guess she's 18, she can go wherever she wants. I think she's kind of going wherever she wants. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Gilmore. Any other witnesses, Ms. Fanna? No, Your Honor. Perry's, y'all want to be released, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We haven't had contact with her since July. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? No, because really since she left placement, she's really done what she's wanted to and not what the court or anybody else has wanted to. So we, we would just like to be off this. Okay. Okay. I'll release y'all, Mr. and Mrs. Perry. Thank you. Stay on for the rest of this hearing, but y'all are, are done. That'll be included in the order. Ms. Thank Ward, you. what's up? I am so happy that Emma was listening to us at her circle of support when we were all encouraging her to consider looking into the possibility of going to an SIL, that calling it supervised independent living is kind of a, a misstatement because it's not supervised. I mean, right. it's loosely supervised. And um, so we had a little conversation about it last night and you know, she seems like this is really what she wants to do. And I'm just so happy. I think any young adult who's willing to consider an SIL and able to get into an SIL um, would be almost foolish not to take that up because it, it does provide so many resources. And I mean, they get a monthly allowance that they're not going to get if they just age out. They get an apartment paid for. They get They get so many resources and so much. Um, help and just in exchange they have to work or go to school which they're going to have to do anyway so um, I, I'm just so happy that she has gotten at least a little bit out of that I'm not listening to adult mode and um, her to us because I think we all really encouraged her to at least look at the option and, and now that is what she wants to do she indicated to me that and this may or may not be true that um they're looking at either Austin or San Antonio um, 
I'm more familiar with the one in Austin, but um, it, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a great program either way. And I think, um, I think that Emma would thrive there. Um, so anyway, that's, to me, this is like the best update that I didn't expect. Um, and I, I mean, I expected to be like, yeah, we're just aging out, we're moving on. And um, so I'm, I'm really happy that this is being considered. And I just hope that um, an SIL will accept her quickly so that she can get into an apartment and get moving on her adult life. Well, good. Um, yeah, they, it's kind of a misnomer. You know, they probably ought to change it, you know, to un, un, unsupervised, you know? Uh, yeah, because after you've been in care for all this time, you go, oh, hell no, I don't want any supervision. Yeah, right. And, so, and it's like they check in once a month or so. It's not, yeah, it's not like anybody's standing outside your door looking to see what you're doing or what you're up right. to doing. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. Um, Ms. Gilmore, glad you're going to help her with getting all that in, in effect. And um, I'm just going to say trial independence again on her birthday, cost is released. Ms. Ward, I obviously want you to stay on to monitor and help uh, <clears throat> Emma as much as you can. And uh, let's come back in 416 also to kind of see where we're at. And the services review hearing at that time. Emma, did you have it since you're here? Did you have anything you wanted the judge to know or talk about? Uh, no, I just wanted to like see what was said. Sure, that's fair. You're you're always allowed to do that. Okay. Right. Four sixteen, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, happy eighteenth birthday. Go register to vote and all the other fun things that you can do when you're eighteen. And uh, we hope you have a nice birthday and good luck. And we'll see everybody on four sixteen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judge. About to give me the truth. Oh, excuse. Nothing but the truth will help you, God. I will see you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Peckle, you may begin, please. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I'll call Lisa Payne to testify. And Lisa, you're here this afternoon asking Judge Mabry to approve your adoption of a young man up to now known as Alejandro. Yes, sir. And part of this proceeding will ask her to change his name also. Is that right? Yes. And his new name will be Zachariah? Correct. And he's lived with you all for at least six months, hadn't he? Yes. And you adopted his brother back at the beginning of September of last year. Is that right? Yes. He was Joel, and now he's Ezekiel. Yes. Right? He's Ezekiel. yes. Okay. Very good. Now, let's talk about Alejandro for just a minute. He was born back on January 23. Is that correct? Yes. Born here in the state of Texas. Is that right? Yes. You all have gotten, well, you know it's background information because you got his brother. You got that information then. But you got more this time, didn't you? Yes. Okay. You comfortable doing the adoption today? Absolutely. You know what you know what you what you're getting into because you've had him all along and you've got his <laughs> brother and he's is, is your little boy. Is that right? Yes. Yes. You understand this will legally make you his mom and this will legally make Raul his dad. Yes. And that's what you think is best for him? A hundred percent. And best for yourself, best for your family, best for his brother too. Is that right? Yes. Okay. As part of this, the new name will be Zachariah. Yes. If I asked already, I apologize. Change his name in that fashion. Is that correct? Is that right? Yes, sir. And you promise to raise him and love him as best you know how to do? Yes. For as long as you can do that. Yes. Very much. Very much. Uh, I'll pass it with John. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, Payne? No, Judge. No? Okay. Next witness, please. Mr. Serbin, Raul, state your name, please. Raul Serbin. Uh, Mr. Serbin, you're made to Lisa Payne, aren't you? Yes. And you're also asking Judge Mabry today to approve your adoption of the young man. I guess if you're holding now, aren't you? That's Alejandro. Yes, sir. Okay. And to legally make you his daddy. Uh, yes, sir. You also think this is the best thing for him? Yes. And for your family, too? Yes, sir. And you also promise to raise him and love and nurture him and protect him as well as you know how to do? Yes. Or as long as you're able to, to, to do that. Yes, sir. 100%. I appreciate that. No further questions for Mr. Serbin, Your Honor. Ms. McClure, Ms. Fanna. No questions. No. Okay, thank you. Next witness, Mr. Special. That's Matt Bowden. Okay, please. Very good. Matt, state your name, please. Matt Bowden. Matt, you're here this afternoon on behalf of the Department of Family and Protective Services. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. And you all have consented to the adoption. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you felt it's the best thing for Alejandro? Oh, yes, sir. 
And he's in his, well, he's with his brother and he's where he belong, belongs to be. Is that fair to say? It, it's the only place that he knows this is where he needs to be. Yes, sir. Not good. Uh, and, you, and he's loved and cared for him. And they're taking good, doing all that, aren't they? Yes, sir. They are phenomenal. And he is the happiest, happiest, happiest baby I have ever seen. Well, okay. I, I got no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ms. Van and Ms. McClure? No questions. Okay, thank you. Next witness. <laughs> Smith Garcia, Madeline Garcia. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. There you are. Okay, super. One, state your name, please. Adelana Garcia. And you're here on behalf of Caring Hearts for Children, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you all have prepared reports for the court, is that right? Yes, sir. You've had a chance to go out to the house and visit with the family? Yes. And you felt this is the best thing that we, we could do for Alejandro? Absolutely. And this family loves him a lot, don't they? They sure do. And and this that's his family right there, isn't it? That's all he's known. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm just very happy that we're here today and that... Um, we got this done as quickly as possible. All right. Very well. Thank you. I'll pass it away to Sean. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Ms. Garcia? No? No, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Paschal, next witness? Is Mr. Fowler here? There he is. Yes, David yes. Fowler. And the advocate's here, too. Ms. Kay Brandy, she's the advocate. Okay. Oh, it's, okay. Wonderful. I'll, I'll talk to Kay. Uh, okay. Kay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Fantastic. One, state your name, please. Kay Brandy. And Kay, you're the advocate, is that right? Yes, sir. I'll let you testify in your own words. What do you want to say about this place with this adoption? Um, well, I've seen these people with this baby since he was um, a peanut in your hands. <laughs> I got to hold him as a peanut, and uh, I, I cannot be any happier for this little guy than... I can't even imagine anything else. He's he's happy. I've watched him grow over the past year. Um, he's just amazing. Happiest little thing you've ever seen. And they are, the mom and dad, Lisa and Raul, are amazing with those children. Um, I've seen them with all the children and, her, you know, his brother and him. And they they are amazing. Couldn't, couldn't be happier for them. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Fan and Ms. McClure. Uh, thank you. Next witness. Uh, I'm out of witnesses. I'll ask you to take judicial notice of the contents of the court's file. I'll take judicial notice of all the filings in uh, 56336 and also the underlying CPS case, which is cause number 54818. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll rest. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Fan, do you have any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Brandy, anything else? Sorry, I got the hiccups. Ms. Brandy, anything else you'd like to add? I can't think of a single thing other than I'm going to miss that little baby. I've just loved watching him grow. He's the cutest thing ever. Yes, he is very cute. Mr. Fowler, anything? I got to visit a little one at the uh, hospital one time ago. He was he was so precious and just so small. Now he's grown so big. Um, he's in the right place, and we're looking forward to the adoption. Okay. Uh, before I get to Ms. McClure, anybody else like to add anything that's not that you just want to say in the narrative versus a question and answer? No? Everybody's good? Okay. Wrap it up, Ms. McClure. I know you always have some good things to say. Well, um, thank you. And this couple, gosh, I feel like, I, well, I have known them for years. Um, I think this is going to be the first time I have not had a child from these parents on my my sheet since like 2020. Um, yeah. I, I, and, um, and oh, before that, because, well, 2020. <laughs> yeah. What, when did we have the little girl? Was that... Uh, that was at the beginning of 2020 is when we had it that. It was. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember we were in court and they got served and it was pre right pre-COVID, but I thought it was, I didn't remember being the little girl or or the middle child, like, right. but I guess it was the daughter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, th this couple, they love life. They are so protective of life. They have been so concerned about any new babies. I, I mean, already Lisa's been, you know, concerned about that because we all know how this works. 
Um, she, she, she and I have cried on the phone more than once about many of the things that have happened over the course of all these cases. They love life. They love children. They have devoted themselves to raising these two little boys and to, to stay in contact with, um, with the other child, the little girl. And, uh, they are just wonderful about, uh, family and, and, and loving each other and loving these children. I'm going to miss my trips to Stephenville. I have, uh, <laughs> I've gotten to where I can almost drive that in my sleep now. And um, I know that these boys are going to uh, continue to be loved and, and cared for and protected and raised the way they need to be raised. So I am very grateful to them. I'm very grateful that I've gotten to know them. And um, I, uh, to echo what Kay said, I could not be happier. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I, I've been on the case for the whole long time too. Yeah. Been oh very uh it's been very interesting you know it's like oh here comes another baby here comes another baby You're like oh my and i know that y'all were there at the hospital when he was born or not when he's born but you know soon thereafter as y'all could get there and um uh it's been great that y'all have kept up with sibling contact with the grandparents and uh all that and so we really appreciate that and i hope that that will continue um i hope that the parents are uh, using safe, you know what I'm talking about. And so um, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, if they do have any other children, it would, it would probably occur in Travis County. And I don't know the case and I don't know if we would, we would have any ties or if we would even know, but, yeah. <laughs> but I hope, I hope we would. Uh, yeah. But I don't ever, like our last one we adopted, I don't ever have to worry about Alejandro because I know he is in great hands and y'all have really stepped up. And I mean, you already got, I think you, you got two babies at your house. The other one is still a little, a little bitty man too. So yes. how, how y'all do it, I, I don't know, but y'all do a great <laughs> job, especially to keep some of these people that are really, really particular happy. So <laughs> it, it's great that it, it's a great day. I'm sorry we're not in person. Because I know we were looking forward to seeing everybody. Oh, there he is. And I know Miss Fanna was too. But, you know, Texas weather. Welcome, you know, welcome to our world. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to find I do have jurisdiction over this case and over Mr. Alejandro that his birthday was, oh, it's this week, isn't it? He'll be one year old. You know, I got to tell y'all, it's amazing that we got this done in less than a year. I, I think thanks to your caseworkers, your lawyers, I mean, this is record time. Record time. Agata. Agata. She's the yes. real. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we'll give her a gold star today. Okay. <laughs> so star. But I mean, I, I don't even remember doing one in the last year. But anyway, so y'all have my poster children for getting it done. So anyway, he's going to have a birthday party. Y'all can have a really yeah. good day. Um, um, I'm going to find that the biological parents' rights were previously terminated by this court which makes him eligible for adoption, find that he is a Texas citizen and a United States resident, find that he has lived with y'all way more than the six months it's required for the adoption, that y'all have passed all the home studies and everybody here asking you a gazillion questions. You passed all those with fly to fly. And I find that Ms. McClure and Ms. Brandy, as your ad litems, have done a great bang up job on checking in and making sure Alejandro was doing well, making sure me and Miss uh, Vanna had all the correct information that we needed. So we appreciate y'all. We're going to release y'all from further representation. <laughs> uh, 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 security uh, number be, be given so people can't come back and, you know, be looking through records and stuff like that. Uh, and the birth certificate will also be entered, be created sometime by my other favorite agency, not the Bureau of Vital Statistics. So y'all, you know how that goes. I'm going to order that the underlying yes case closed. Ms. Van has already filed a motion to dismiss that. I haven't signed the order yet, but I will sign it as soon as I get it printed out. And uh, but the under all the files are sealed. The records closed. I know there's two big ones I hadn't forgotten. I'm getting to those in just a second. Just looking through the order real quick. Okay, we're going to have a new name, Zachariah. That's a long name. He's going to have fun. Are, are y'all calling him Zachariah or Zach or what? 
I think they're doing Zeke and Zach. Yes. See? Oh, that's cute. It's cute, cute. Okay, so call him Zach. That's very cute. Where did they go? There we go. Okay. There y'all are. There they are. Dylan Payne was going to look at. But anyway, I'm going to approve the name change. And last but not least, I'm going to grant the adoption. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paschal, I will sign the order you sent. And uh, when I get to my, I just want to see my coordinator. Obviously not today because we're Zooming because of the weather. She'll she'll uh, she'll send it to you, okay? Mighty fine. That's terrific. Okay. That's good. Well, thank you all. Good luck. And we'd love to see you all again, but, you know, maybe in a different capacity. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you for everybody. Oh, well, thank you all. Okay. Stay Appreciate safe. It. Warm and bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye. Boy, that one, that one started off really tense. Whenever we were trying to find him and what hospital and everything, and I'm just so grateful that that all ended so well. And I think it was the one. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, investigation supervisor at the time said they had another baby, and I'm like, "We'll take, we'll do the case. Take him, remove him. Well, I don't care if he's in Austin. We'll do it." Yeah. the call man. I'm like, "No, we're going to do it." Yep. Yep. Well done on everybody's part. And, and Agata, because of these two last cases, she is now, from what I understand, she is the go-to person in the state of Texas for this issue. Her birth certificates. <laughs> she's going to be our, uh, she can be our uh, expert in that regard. That is I'll give you a call, Agata. I've got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay, good. Thank okay. y'all. Thank you. Bye, good. Bye. See y'all. Thank you. I have an MIA client, so I don't have much to offer today. Okay. Somebody named Tanya is in the waiting room. I know Tanya. Yes, Your Honor. Tanya is the parenting coach as well as Krista. She's also the parenting coach. Okay. So they're witnesses. And Deb Tabor, she a witness? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I thought y'all had an MSA for this case. We do, Judge. A partial. Um, Dad was is MIA, so... Um, and also I think there were things in the MSA for the court to decide regarding mom, um, child support, um, and some, I guess, provisions. Let's see what it said about provisions regarding possibly drug testing regarding, um, for the mom and visits. It says further orders for child support parameters for visits and other yeah. orders as needed. And the yeah. department in the department is alleging a breach, um, Respondent also has some breaches that that we are alleging um, on behalf of the department, which are in my motion for continuance as well. Okay, we have 30 minutes. Y'all know that. Yes, Your Honor. That's why I requested a continuance, because frankly, I'm really shocked at the position of the department, um, considering the recommendations that have been made by the experts. All I was asking for was a time to get a hair strand back so that the court could conclude definitively or not within the 30 day time frame, whether or not my client used. I think the Does issue have hair spots? Pardon me? Does, have any hair? Does what? I'm sorry. Does it have any hair? Yes, Your Honor. It's in a she pulls it back and puts it in a ponytail because okay. she works at a food place. And so yes. Okay. She does. So I think the department's position is that a negative dilute is a positive. And my position is that a negative dilute is diluted because it has fluid in it and it is negative because there were no substances found in it. All subsequent tests have been negative. It's a marijuana case. And I don't believe it is an irrebuttable presumption or even should be a presumption at the end of the case um, that a negative dilute is a positive. So okay. I think I'd like to make legal arguments about that as well. And that's why I asked for the continuance. We don't have a segmented hair strand for that 30 day period. The department did not request one. So when I found out that segmented was not requested on either Thursday or Friday from Miss Vanna, I had been asking for that. And when I found out it was not segmented, my client went and did a segmented hair. Hold on, hold on. Let me call. You're not talking too much. Let okay. me call the case and gotcha. put everybody in because I haven't even identified all y'all. I just was asking for quick little announcements based upon the fact that you right. thought I thought you would want to go to a breakout room because this didn't sound like what I was told on how this case was going to go today. Sure. So okay. she is represented by Miss Sonia Wright, the attorney in Lydum, and the CASA advocate is Miss Veronica Cam and Miss Andrea Welch is her supervisor. 
The mom is named Miss Cammie Williamson. She's here. Her attorney is Susan Potts. Uh, the father is the uh, adjudicated father is Mr. Patrick Shropshire. He is not here. His attorney is Miss Nina Willis, and she's here. Department is represented by Miss Adada Vanna, and the caseworker is Miss Madeline Miller. She's here, and uh, I guess Miss Miss Millaway is filling in as her supervisor. I don't think she's her supervisor, but she's filling in as the supervisor today. Uh, and the uh, placement, uh, the placement of Trinity is here also. So okay. Uh, let me just go back over the docket sheet. On 11 7 23, we had the final trial. We were in person, or I was. Um, Dad and his attorney did not appear. The mediated settlement agreement was approved. An extension was granted. I think that extension was per the mediated settlement agreement, also. Uh, CPS was to pay for Miss, Miss Cammie's uh, parenting coach. And that was the last thing I had on that one. So, Miss Vanna, what? Where we were supposed to have the trial and be done today, where, where from the department's position, where are we today? From the department's position, Judge, uh, the department believes that we need to, that the court needs to make a, an order and a ruling based on the mediated settlement agreement um, and that we move forward with the termination of the parental rights of the father. Um, specifically, I think the, the contention here is that um, the MSA in Section 2 E states that um, that mom continue to submit to drug tests and provide a completely clean test no later than December 15th and maintain clean tests. Um, and so that interpretation to the department and I believe all other parties except for, um, for mom means no dilutes um, and that it be a completely negative test. Um, and that if that did not occur, then um, let me see here. If that did not happen, then the placement would be named permanent managing conservator of La Trinity, and Miss Cammy Williamson would be the possessory conservator of La Trinity with a four hour supervised visit on the first Saturday of each month. Um, and so that's where the department is at because on December, I believe it was 14th, Miss Cammy Williamson tested for the department, but it was a negative dilute. Okay, so what are what's the placement supposed to be named? I mean, it sort of sounds like we have a we have a this thing, this idea, and that idea. Yes, that the placement um, that Jordan and Brandon Collier be named permanent managing conservators or joint managing conservators of La Trinity, and that Miss Cammie Williamson be named the possessory conservator. Is that just a for sure, regardless of? What ifs on drug tests and other stuff? That was um, dependent on the drug tests and her compliance with the provisions of the MSA. Um, otherwise, if she had completely complied with every term of the MSA, it would have been a monitored return. Okay. I mean, I can read the MSA, but which I will, but I needed to hear from y'all too. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Vanna? No, Your Honor. And in the MSA were these date were the court dates uh, anticipated or said or whatever. I mean, do, do we say y'all had the do we have a January deadline? Yes, Judge. This case was set for a final hearing um, on or the motion for a monitored return for January second, um, but that date was moved till today. Okay. Because the so, whole docket was moved. There's been two more weeks. Yes. Okay. Okay, Ms. Potts, let's talk about your motion for continuance. Yes, Your Honor. Um, client's test was negative dilute. Subsequently, she's had all negative tests. Uh, the department's policy um, provides that when a sample is diluted, that the caseworker is to take one or more of the following actions, which would be to have the person retested, to request a different type of testing, or to rely on credible observation um, from collaterals. The department did request a hair strand, but it was not confirmed to me until Friday that the hair strand was not segmented for the 30 days in question because the client needed to be clean during that 30 day time period. So my client went 
and obtained a hair strand and paid for it herself um, Friday to get a 30 day segmented so that we would know definitively uh, whether or not her UA was clean or not. My legal position is that a diluted negative means diluted, which means it has water in it. A negative means that no drugs were found. And so the department should have then done a segmented hair strand to determine whether or not my client was completely clean during that time. And we were at the end of the case, and I believe that severely restricting my client's rights um, based upon that one diluted test um, would be not only unfair, but not appropriate under the law. It would be at worst, if it was a presumption that it's positive, which is not what the department's policy under Section 1935 provides, if it was considered to be presumed positive, that would be a rebuttable presumption. And my client should have the opportunity to put on the evidence to show that she was indeed clean during that time period. And so it is It is our position um, on the motion for continuance. We just need another week or so until we get that test back. And then that test is whatever that test is. It's either going to be clean or it's not. The segment, the unsegmented hair strand that went back 90 days only had 0.9 for marijuana, which was a significant reduction. So you know, it's my belief it's going to come back completely clean. Um, but we shouldn't be using an inconclusive test for negative dilute um, to determine the case as final and on the merits. In addition, it is my position as well that if the department wants to put on the evidence and consider it a breach, uh, that my client would likewise be entitled to put on evidence of the various breaches um, that were made by the department of that agreement and our concern that the agreement going forward for the visits and so forth would not be followed uh, by the placement. The department's own experts have wildly polar opposite recommendations from what the department wants to do. They have several experts in this case, one of which is Deb Tabor, who has been recommending the monitor return for some time now. And in addition, we have the parenting coaches, which are hired by the department who also believe that that would be in the best interest of Trinity. So my position is that yes, the only issue before the court is the dilute or the negative dilute, but that it is a, if the court wants to presume that it is um, a positive, which I think is contrary to the department's policy and the laws, but if that is presumed to be positive, we should be entitled to put in our evidence, uh, which we cannot do because the department did not request the proper test and did not advise us that the proper test was not requested. Um, at a minimum, we should be able to rely on the evidence of the credible sources, which are uh, her parenting coaches, um, the recommendations from Paula Mays, the recommendations from, and Ms. Tabor is here as well, to talk about her sobriety and their belief that that test would come back as a hair strand, would come back as a negative. And I also think that the best interest of Trinity is always something that this court considers. And we wouldn't want to restrict her access to her mother to four hour supervised visits once a month on a Saturday, if that was not in, in her best interest. And there's no finding of what her best interest is um, in the, in the MSA. So your honor, that's my position is that I believe that we should wait until we get legally conclusive definitive test of whether or not my client used during that time period and that she should be entitled to rebut any presumption that a negative dilute was positive um, by having that evidence. And she was declined that opportunity by the department ordering the wrong test. We just need to wait until we get it back. That's my perspective. May I respond your honor briefly? Yeah, but hold on, Ms. Van, let me ask some questions real quick. I mean, Ms. Potts, it doesn't say anything in the MSA about what kind of test she was supposed to submit to. It just says, could provide a completely clean test. It doesn't say be a hair strand or be a UA. Yes, yes, Your Honor, I agree. Um, but a complete, I believe that test was completely clean. There were it was negative for all substances. It's diluted because there was fluid in the test, which is why the department's own policy says that what you need to do is go do a different type of test. She has been testing negatively since then, Your Honor. Which if she had smoked she would come back as positive with 
and the other tests were taken within a couple of days after that. So had she used, we would have had a positive hit um, in the next few days because we all know it stays in the system for a long time. Well, on so, 12, 18, she had a negative dilute, negative that, dilute. That's correct, Your Honor. It was and, on Thursday and then on the following uh, Monday. And throughout this whole case, she's had a bunch of negative dilutes. Yes, Your Honor. Some people do that. And sometimes it's your system. She was also under tremendous pressure to get it done by a certain deadline. So it's possible that she drank fluids because she was really worried that she only had like 20 days to get to a point of where she was completely clean because we had a short time period to get that done. Um, the question is, is an inconclusive test, which says it's negative for all substances, um, is that and, and then the next question is, is if the department has breached this agreement as well, four or five different ways, um, I believe the agreement is void. Well, I just think it's only fair to, to get the hair strand so we're sure what happened. Where did, I mean, she got the hair strand, she paid for it. Did, where'd she go to get it done? Yes, Your Honor, she paid for it at AMDT Testing, which is the department's testing facility. I cleared that with Ms. Vanna in advance. Uh, Ms. Vanna has asked them to send her the results directly. And Cammie has also gone up and signed a release and asked them to send the results directly to Ms. Vanna for the hair strand. And, and I want to clarify that. I said if it if it came back in time, I said if they she goes there and pays for it and it's sent to me directly, but it's not going to get here in time. So the fact that mom went and took it on Monday and it's not ready today. I mean, there's nothing that I can do about that. And, and that was a discussion that that was the whole thing to hold off on that because we don't we have the hearing on the 16th. Further, she had a completely negative test on 12-5 of 2023. That was not a dilute. And that is in the court report. And then she had d dilutes. Furthermore, it's not a presumption that it's a positive test. It's a court order. From the very beginning of this case, the standing orders in all CPS cases in this court is that a dilute negative is considered a positive. Um, so those those had been the previous orders. And this is an agreement that Ms. Cami Williamson made at mediation um, that she would have a completely clean test no later than December 15th. And um, if we're, I mean, we're not, I don't know if we're going into evidence yet, but then on December 15th was her color day and she didn't go test that day. And she had another, so she had an opportunity that same week to have a negative and she did not comply. Uh, well, um, I had a negative on 1227 too. The court says she had a negative on 1227, not a, not a dilute. So she had, so she had a completely negative one on 12 5. Mm -hmm. And then let's see here. Completely negative on 12 27. Correct. And but she had agreed to in the MSA that she'd have a completely negative test no later than December 15th. And Your Honor, if I'm right, she's had completely negative tests ever since then. And she has also been paying for her own tests in addition to the tests from the department because we've had issues with the dilutes. So I just wanted to be sure she was clean and she had an opportunity to present that. What's the and date of the day? Let's see, it's called 11-3. I think we went on the first. 11-3? It was filed on November 3rd. Well, and we've had one, two, three positive marijuana since then. And in November, there were two negative dilutes also yes judge and by the own oh Ms. Potts also sent around um her drug tests from open door and on december 1st um she had a positive at open door for marijuana is she, is she still at open door yes she's she just working with them though she's she not she's not living what? there she's just doing services outside of the facility that's correct judge your Honor, she goes weekly and attends with Ms. Mays um, and Ms. Mays also drug tests. And all of the drug tests after that last negative dilute have been negative. And she's been testing on her own a couple of times a week. She's been testing with the department and she's been testing with Ms. Mays. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Miss Willis, anything? Well, I mean, this doesn't pertain to my client, but just as a former drug prosecutor, there's no way that 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 there was a positive uh, THC level in her urine on the negative dilute if it was negative that right afterwards because the half-life is 60 days so she would be penalized for a faulty test i mean uas are faulty they're just not as as valid a test as a hair strand test so that's why i have no opposition to the to the continuance i think it's only fair that she be able to get a hair strand test at segment and especially if she um pays for it herself okay uh, Casa, what do y'all want to add, Miss Cam? Oh boy. Well, not being a lawyer, this is a lot of what does not relate to me. Um, I can say that, uh, as far as what I think is in the best interest of Trinity is to get this case concluded and to get her in a settled home. I think this has been 13 and a half months that we've been working on trying to get to the point where we could do reunification and we're still not there. And I feel like it, is time to be done with this case. We had the MSA, her test came back negative dilute, and then she didn't test on the 15th when she was supposed to, and not testing, I believe, is supposed to be considered a positive as well. So You're I feel like- Be quiet, right? You're not being asked any questions. Go on, Ms. Cam. I feel like at this point, we've given it lots of time and it's time to let Trinity be settled and go with what we agreed to in the MSA. That's what CASA believes. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Cam? Okay. No. Ms. Wright? Um, Judge, I mean, I feel like this it's not this issue is pretty simple because an MSA is ironclad. I mean, that's probably the surest thing you can ever do in a case. And the as far as either side violating, it's not necessarily a violation. It's that we agreed on two separate paths. And mom could go, you know, the case could end either way, depending on mom's actions by a certain date. She, you know, failed to meet that path to return Trinity. And so I think the legally correct thing to do um, would be to just follow the MSA, um, name the colliers as PMC, and then the court set the parameters as far as drug testing or provisions on um sorry, I was reading, got distracted by the message at the bottom, uh, set the parameters for visitation, drug testing, whatever that is. We've already agreed um, to the time of visits and the supervision. It's just, we need those other uh, provisions. But judge, I mean, we, this, this has been the theme of this whole case. Just, you know, we get it, we get clean and then we backtrack and we're positive and then we're dilute and we're dilute. And it's, this case was not just a marijuana case. This case started, case started as a methamphetamine case. We had a child that tested a very high number for methamphetamine. And so it's not just marijuana that that's marijuana is the smaller issue. Um, and it there's, we all agreed to this. Um, it's very clear in the MSA, no one was under any duress, you know, all that language. And then when uh, we came back here for the court to approve the MSA, everyone heard it and agreed to it again. Um, and so I don't believe there's any way to set this MSA aside and I, I, it is in Trinity's best interest to just follow the MSA as we've all agreed, Judge. Uh, Miss Wright, I thought you said something about the MSA had visitation set forth in it. It, had it does. But it had visitation for in between mediation and today, but I don't see anything for permanent visitation. It's under paragraph eight, it's the very last uh, sentence. Above 8A, it's in that last blurb there that it's four hours supervised on the first Saturday of each month. Okay. okay. Anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Your Honor, I did want to just clarify one thing, and um, that is that my client didn't fail to test on that Friday. She tested on Thursday because Miss Miller called her and asked her to test early. So she tested early. I was completely unaware they wanted her to test two days in a row. She was completely unaware they wanted her to test two days in a row. And then she went again and tested on Monday. And then she's been paying out of pocket for a couple of tests a week in addition to that because she firmly believes that that negative dilute was not a positive. And I just think it's not fair to penalize her for something that her body is doing if she's drug free and she's not had any positive tests for meth since the case, since the very beginning of the case, since it began. So meth was not an issue. She's been clean for that. And she's done absolutely everything on her service plan and everything above and beyond. 
in the end, if we do go forward, I do want to put on evidence of the department's breaches. Well, you know, it sounds to me from reading the report that, and I wasn't at MS media, mediation, I don't know what y'all did at mediation, I mean, other than the MSA, but it sounds to me like the, from reading the report, there have been negative dilutes throughout this case. And it, so I, I, from looking at that, I'm inferring that that's what the department and Ms. Wright and everybody agreed to, where it says completely clean or whatever the exact, yeah, completely clean is the exact word that everybody was trying to say. We don't want any dilute. We don't want any, any of that kind of stuff. We just want a, a negative period, end of story. Well, I think so. Um, uh, yeah, I had something else I wanted to say. I can't remember what it was. Just, just for the sake of argument, it, it just simply because this is a marijuana um, situation at this point in THC, even if it's a negative dilute, I mean, how is a person supposed to know when they pee in a cup whether it's going to come back as dilute or not? That it's it's going to show whether or not she's using THC a couple days later on the next UA. I mean, it just does. It's not like meth where it's out of your system in a couple of days. I, I'm just arguing for the sake of argument. It's not my client, but still, I just don't think it's fair, and I think that it's not that the that the CPS is not being candid in <clears throat> what they agreed to on the MSA. She well, should. I would think that if, I mean, when you're 13 months into a case and you're in a mind and you're even considering my return, we shouldn't even be arguing about this. I mean, it should be clean, 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 clean. And if, if mom side wanted to say something about totally clean, why didn't y'all throw a hair strand in on the MSA? I mean, you know, that, that would have been, a, that would have been an option too. You're um, right. Your Honor. You're right. You're correct, Your Honor. And that's my fault. And I don't want my client penalized because I didn't think to ask for a hair strand. And all what, what did y'all anticipate y'all would do? What are you supposed to do about the father? Just not, make him pay child support and not name him a conservator? I mean, what, what was the department's plan for him, Miss Fanna? We were going to move forward with termination, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that what everybody wanted? We didn't discuss the father. The MSA was just between the, because the father didn't show up, just uh, between the mother um, and the rest of the parties. Okay. And I've had absolutely no contact. And it's a little annoying that the professional involved, which is the, uh, whoever the director was of that halfway house he was at, he also never responded. And I think CPS had the same problem, but, you know, shame on them, but this this guy obviously isn't interested in being a father. Right. Uh, Ms. Fanna, I have he was served uh, January 18th of 2023. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Personally served. Okay. And Your Honor, if this is a presumed positive, then I would like to be able to put on expert testimony about negative, not a positive dilute, it's a negative dilute. And I feel like I'm entitled to do that. And we were denied that opportunity when we didn't get, the department didn't do the segment at Hare soon. Ms. Potts, are you saying that the hair strand should be completely clean of anything? Yes, Your Honor, absolutely. That was the agreement. I was going to be completely clean of everything when there was a positive marijuana on 11-15. Because we asked for a segmented, so we will know within the 30 day, we did a 30 day segmented, so we will know whether or not it, she used um, during the time of the MSA when she was supposed to be clean. When is the hair strand test supposed to come back? Your Honor, it should come back either late this week or early next week. Monday was a holiday, and I know they've had ice. It goes up to Ohio, and they FedEx it, and then it gets FedEx back. But... Uh it, at the latest, it should be back next week. Ms. Vanna, has uh, the mother continued to test since 1227? That was about two weeks ago. Um, Ma, she has been testing. And what are the, have you gotten those results? Yes, Your Honor. I believe, they, I believe they were negative. Is that right, Ms. Miller? Ms. 
Miss Miller, are you looking those up? Okay. Just to make sure. My memory serves me. It what they were negative. All the ones I received were negative. Okay, so I'm 1227, uh, 105 was a complete negative. Um, also, 105 was the hair strand that was positive. And then on 110 or 110, it was completely negative. What was the, uh, oh, it was hair strand. It was positive yeah. for marijuana. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That was the one, Your Honor, that went back 90 days. I know, I, I, I get it. Okay. I don't have time today because the schedule is not prepared uh, to have a long hearing. And I have two cases that are very long after this one. So we're not going to get into who's compliance and who's not. I'm going to reset this case for a final trial on two o'clock on January 25th. Okay. Let me judge. Let me check with the rent. I might have a permanent or a, Free trial hearing for that jury trial that day. 25th should be fine. Um, I think everyone was available for the 24th for that hearing judge. Okay. Um, and there was an attorney that could not do the 25th. So that should be fine. Okay. Two o'clock PM hair results should be back by then. And if we're going to, I mean, we have all afternoon on that. We have three hours on that one. So hopefully the hair strand will be back and y'all can get your witnesses and I'm going to need some child support information and uh, we'll just deal with it then. And if the drug the tests aren't back, then we're going forward anyway, period. Okay, Ms. Williamson, you have a service plan. You have to comply. Your parental rights be subject to termination. Ms. Miller, she needs to continue to stay on the color scheme. And I don't want any dilute negatives. I either want positives or negative, period, in the story. Because there have been negatives too. So something's going on that there's, I mean, there's different, I just don't want any. So Ms. Miller, she needs to test this week and before the 25th with the results back to you before the trial. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll see y'all 125, 24. Be, be via Zoom. I'll be in another county. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, this is a compliance hearing. Uh, Ms. Van, I thought we were going to dismiss the case. Yes, Judge. Um, my office failed to file that motion, so I will be making an oral motion today to... Um, to terminate the participation case, Your Honor. Um, the Both fathers have complied with their services. They've taken steps to um, ensure the safety of the children through court orders in the family law cases. Um, and uh, unfortunately, um, mom has not been compliant, And but we are ready to dismiss because of the protective fathers. And Your Honor, if I may respond. Yes, ma'am. Um, Your Honor, I, I would take issue with the characterization of mom as not compliant. Um, mom and I both have had significant communication with the department and service providers in trying to get her scheduled for services. And um, she is complying as far as she's in individual therapy with Deb Tabor. It took a little while to get that started on Deb's part, not on Ms. Cole's part. Um, in addition, we have been asking since our last hearing for um, some other resource for anger management because the resource she was provided, Aware Central Texas, did not have any scheduled classes and were not scheduling them because they did not have teachers. And I and Ms. Cole regularly asked for other options and were not provided them. Um, and then finally was asking for approval for Ms. Tabor to um, do that in individual counseling with Ms. Cole. And the department only gave approval for that on like last Thursday. Um, so I think that the characterization that Ms. Cole is non-compliant is not fully accurate. She has made significant efforts and I can confirm those efforts because I was copied on the text messages and emails. Um, and I can tell you that those efforts and her lack of progress um, is not in um, totally in in Miss Cole's uh, control. And so I just want the court to know and for everyone to note that 
uh, Miss Cole was making efforts and those efforts were significantly delayed and frustrated by um, lack of responsiveness from providers, lack of responsiveness from the department and an inability to get scheduled. Um, and that's not Miss Cole being not compliant. Uh, Ms. McAnally, are all the things that Ms. Cole was supposed to do in this participation case, are those items that she needs to do in the underlying family law cases? I don't believe that those things are included in temporary orders at this point. I obviously don't have a part in those private underlying family law cases, um, so I don't have direct um, knowledge of those orders. But I, my understanding is, is that those things aren't necessarily included in that process. Okay. Uh, Mr. Baker, do you have orders in effect regarding your client's child? We, we have... Uh, <clears throat> an emergency temporary restraining order in place and it's set for temporary order hearing tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. In what county? Burn it. All right. Okay. And Mr. Grimes, what about you? We have uh, an agreement that we reached December the 11th. Um, the lawyer who represents uh, Ms. Cole here in Williamson County has a uh, significantly different recall of what the agreement was that we announced to the court. So we've asked for a transcript and we have a motion to enter filed. Um, we are not allowing any unsupervised visits to occur right now until we get temporary orders in place. Okay. Uh, she we, have a a pretty, we have a pretty significant, I'm sorry, judge. We have a pretty significant um, drug testing requirement. That's also going to be included in our temporary orders. Sorry. And uh, she has a hired attorney. She does. Who is that? Carl, 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 Carl Knickerbocker. Carl Knickerbocker. Okay. He's in he, rep he, he represents her on my case as well, Judge. Oh, okay. Okay. And so these services that Ms. McIntyre was talking about and all that, those are things that y'all can deal with. Maybe you haven't been dealt with yet, but those are things that y'all can deal with in y'all's underlying family law cases to help with the children anyway, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, sure. And, and so, Mr. Grimes, you have temporary orders, but do you have a, any further hearings set? We have a motion to enter hearing set for next month. Right. But it, it nothing, no final or anything like that set yet? No, we wanted some time to elapse so that we can do some more drug testing. Okay. 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 And where are the children? They're with dad. <clears throat> with dad. Yeah, with each dad. Of, each of their dads. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Miss Bennett, what do you think about everything? Um, I mean, I, I agree with that. And I do want to tell the court I had an in-person appointment set up to meet with the kids last night, but I'm a wimp. And so I did not leave my house yesterday, but I did meet with them by video and I have met with them in person previously, but those kids are, I mean, they're doing great. Um, they're always well dressed and happy, and I mean, they look very well taken care of. I, I mean, I'm I don't have any opposition to dismissing this case and letting them go forward with um, their private cases. Okay. Well, it sounds like everybody's represented in the in the underline or outline, whatever you want to call it, uh, family law cases, and all of these issues can be addressed there. No reason for us to continue. So. I will grant Ms. Bannis motion to dismiss and everybody is released from further representation and I wish everybody the best of luck. So thank you. Y'all are all excused. Thank you. Everybody thank you, testify. Judge. Please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Our attorney Latham is Ms. Susan Potts. She's here. Their uh, the advocate is... Oh, no. Who is their CASA advocate, y'all? Uh, there is Kim's no advocate. It's just Miss Singleton. Kim Singleton, CASA supervisor. supervisor. The mother is Kaylee Sheffield, C-A-E-L-Y. Her attorney is Miss Natalie Fowler. She's here, I think. The father's Bradley Sheffield. He's here. Sheffield, y'all have to show your face because you're in court now. Uh, I think I just saw Bradley fixing his hair. Miss Kaylee, you need to show your face. There she is. Um, Mr. Bradley Sheffield's attorney is Ms. Natalie Bennett. The department is here represented by Mr. Rafael Tovar and his supervisor, Ms. Jacinda Mouton, and their lawyers, Ms. Agata Banna. I think that's everybody. 
Um, we are set for trial today, but it's my understanding uh, that uh, y'all are set for jury trial, I think, on the 29th of January. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. 9-13-23, Ms. Vanna filed an objection to having virtual hearings, but obviously we had to have uh, virtual hearings today due to the weather and uh, some people are having water and different situations, so we are having a virtual hearing today just because this is really just kind of had to have this set on the docket. Um, my understanding, I heard a while ago on another case that y'all are set for a pre-trial on this case on what's the time, Ms. Vanna, so we can get it on the record. It'll probably be the 24th because somebody said they're not available on the 25th. Okay. Of January. Okay. I think we got a notice of setting in the last Did couple we? of months. I think so. Oh. I'll look. Good. I haven't seen it yet. Me either. <laughs> okay. So that being said, I think Ms. Uh, Bennett, you have a motion, don't you, that we need to hear today? Yes, Your Honor. Um, last week I filed a motion for an extension and we join in that motion, Your Honor. And it was not a notice of setting for this case. It was something else. My apologies. Okay. Okay. Miss uh, Bennett, you can go on and talk about it real quick. Okay. Um, would you like me to talk about it or would you like me um, to call my clients to testify about the extension? Well, whatever's quickest because y'all are set. We're supposed to be set for another one at 2.15 and I have another one at 4.15. <laughs> so whatever's quickest. Okay, Your Honor. Um, uh, we would request an extension. Um, my client feels that there are extraordinary circumstances and that it's in the best interest of the children for the court to grant the requested extension. Uh, my client has had significant issues communicating with the department. He's had his services. I mean, it, I mean, it just, I don't know if you read my motion and don't need me to go over all of it, but I mean, there have been numerous issues, which a lot of which were not my client's fault. Um, and he has had a lot of issues in scheduling things. He's also had a lot of financial difficulties. A lot of his, he, he's in Burnett County and it, it does not have consistent income or anything. And his services have been set up in Bell County and Travis County and all these other places where he doesn't have the money or the funds to drive to, um, we are um, like his BIP class was scheduled in Travis County. Um, there's no service providers. Um, he has a psychological appointment set up for the 17th of this month, which likely they won't even have the report ready by the time we go to the final trial. Um, mom, I mean, of course, this is more into Natalie Fowler's um, part, but, you know, she's pregnant and due with a new baby in the beginning of February. So it would also be in the best interest to have the case open and keep an eye on all of that um, to see, you know, how all of that goes to make sure that the parents are doing what they need to do and in compliance and that they're still testing and whatever the court feels needs to be done to check to make sure that the new baby is in a safe and appropriate environment so that they can show and prove that they are doing everything that they can. There have been some times and different points during this case where my client was working his service plan and his visits were suspended and then he couldn't have visits with his children, even if he submitted the drug screenings. And um, of course he will testify that he takes full responsibility, but that's very stressful and disheartening when you know that and are told that basically whatever you do, you're not going to get to see your kids. Um, he has tried to get back on track and has calls in and has everything, I think has many different appointments and 
um, therapists and different things scheduled. It's, it's really interesting that his psychological evaluation, my client called and was able to schedule it through zoom instead of having to drive all the way to Austin when it was prior scheduled. Um, he was supposed to drive all the way to Austin. I just, I guess stuff like that. I just don't, don't understand. Um, but anyway, he's on point now and, um, I believe that he will jump through whatever hoop that you want him to jump through. I believe that he is fully aware of the consequences of not doing that and realizes that, I mean, there are no other chances and that this will all affect not only his girls who he loves very much, but also this new baby. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Miss Fowler, you say you agree. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we join and uh, in on this motion um, to extend jurisdiction. My client is due to um, have another baby. Um, she has two girls. If you read through the visitation notes with not just Kaylee, but with Bradley as well, these girls love their parents. Um, they have really not had an advocate in this court, Your Honor, um, to advocate for their stated desires and the fact that they wanted visitation throughout all of the ups and downs. Um, I had previously requested that another attorney ad litem be assigned to this case because um, judgment was being substituted and we essentially had two guardian ad litems. And you told me that you were not there yet. Um, I am at this point requesting that an attorney ad litem that um, meets with her clients and has confidential communications and comes to court and advocates for their stated desires is assigned to this case. I'm also asking that this case be extended um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, my client is um, considered by just about every party in here to be the victim of domestic violence. Um, she is going to give birth next month. Um, she currently does not have transportation. Um, she currently does not have the support of her family. And we are looking um, for all of the all of the services that seem to be um, depleted of resources right now for her to um, try and get in. And so um, I just don't see what extending this case does that is negative. These girls are in a placement, a foster home that they have only been in for two months, two and a half months. Um, the child advocates are now saying that this is an adoptive home and they want these children to be adopt adopted. And that may very be well be where we end up in this case. Um, but two and a half months is, I think everybody knows a honeymoon period for children. And um, we, I don't see, I, I just do not see a downside. Um, in, in getting another 180 days for this case. Okay, thank you, Ms. Fowler. Uh, Ms. Fanna. Yes, Your Honor. The department opposes the, the extension. Um, first of all, um, I don't see that there is any extraordinary circumstance in this case to extend the case. Um, I understand that, you know, dad says, or, um, Ms. Bennett states that dad is now, Mr. Bradley Sheffield is ready to, um, to start services and do what he needs to. He has had a year to do so. And it is two weeks, a week and a half before the jury trial that he requested. And he is just now ready to start services. That is just unacceptable and not an extraordinary circumstance to extend the case. Um, he has not tested for the department. He has not, um, he has not done any services judge, um, He's now scheduled a, another psychological. We had a psychological schedule scheduled for him in December. He made it. He didn't even go to that one. Um, and the department re also requests that he go in person. Um, doing psychologicals virtually, um, we just don't believe that that is um, that an accurate picture can be that it's as effective as an in person. A psychological. Um, the department was going to pay for all of dad's services. Um, so I do not understand how, how he has had financial problems and could not comply with his services. Um, mom being pregnant and almost due is also not an extraordinary circumstance judge. Um, I just don't feel that 
that there's any justification in extending this case for another 180 days for parents that have not done their services. Granted, Ms. Sheffield did participate in therapy, um, actually until December or maybe through the middle of December. At the beginning, um, she had left Mr. Sheffield and made significant progress, but then she returned and she continues to be with Mr. Sheffield um, and had stopped doing services. And she stopped doing those a long time ago. They can't even go drug test so they can have visits with their children. They have not seen their children in a in a very long time, Judge. And it's for their failure to comply with their services. I'm asking the court to deny the motion for extension. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Costa, Ms. Singleton, what do you think? Um, they, we, we're hearing the same thing we've heard throughout the whole case, that they're going to do something and they don't. Um, I do not think it needs to be extended it's it's a long time, especially for a kid to wait, you know, to be able to get to see their kids. All they were required to do was three consecutive UAs in order to get that started. And that hasn't happened. At the last hearing, we asked mom was just pregnant. She said she was not pregnant. I have concerns and would like for her to sign a release so Raphael or the department can check with the prenatal doctor to make sure she hasn't had any positive tests. Um, Braley's ready to get on with her life. She make, makes that clear to everybody that she's ready to move on. So they, Bradley has not done anything, has told numerous lies about everything throughout the case. He's, never, he's been required to provide proof of stuff that he says. He's never been able to do that. Even something as simple as giving a, a prescription that he insisted he had. So, and the only reason the kids are not supporting is because of Brad's and Kaylee. Their, their history with them and what has happened. The family placement failed because of Brad. So we, we want to move forward with termination. Okay, Ms. Potts. Your Honor, I would concur with Casa in the department. What about what Ms. Fowler said about uh, asking for a new attorney in Latham? Well, I, I think uh, the record will reflect that from the beginning of the case forward, I advocated for visits uh, with the parents, with the children, even though they were testing positive. We did visits. We also continued to do virtual visits. Um, after that time, the court ordered ultimately when they continued to either fail to test or to test positive, um, the court ordered they needed three consecutive uh, QAs. So I've been following the court's orders. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Tovar? Have I, I have your court report, and I was wondering. Let me flip to this page. Has Miss Sheffield done any drug testing for you since ten since twelve twenty seven? My knowledge, no. I haven't received any results since October. And since twelve twenty seven, how how often has her color come up? Weekly. Weekly, so probably twice. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. What about Mr. Sheffield? Uh, I believe the last test I received for him was back in July, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, Ms. Potts, on... seven eleven twenty three, 23 I ordered each parent to pay $225 per month child support beginning 8 one How much child support have you received? Your Honor, I have not received any child support. Okay. Have, to the best of your knowledge, have they been providing any personal effects as you and uh, CPS or the cost or the uh, or the placement have recommended or requested? Your Honor, I think I need to defer that question to CASA, but it was my understanding they did provide some things. They sent a couple of packages um, to the prior placement um, to Aunt Connie. Uh, but to my knowledge, nothing has been provided uh, since their move a couple of months ago. Um, Ms. Vanna, on 829, I believe is what my docket sheet says, 23, Mr. Sheffield is ordered to pay 225 per month reimbursement to the district clerk for court-appointed attorney fees because he has uh, hired attorneys and was bonding out on a whole bunch of criminal cases. Uh, county attorney was to report fees at each hearing. Do you know if any of that has been paid? No, Judge, let me check again to see if he's made a payment today or not. No, Your Honor, I don't see that anything has been paid. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, I'm going to order that Ms. Sheffield is to sign a release uh, for the department by 1-18-24 for prenatal services. She's to do so at the CPS office. Uh, that gives her two days to do it. I'm going to say by 3 p.m., 1-18-24. And Ms. Tovar, you need to get the release ready so she can sign it at the CPS office and burn it. You can write down in Burnett, Texas. Parents shall have a service plan. You have to comply. Your parental rights will be subject to termination. I'm going to deny the motion for extension. Y'all are set for pretrial on 124-24 and set for jury trial to begin 129-24. So y'all are excused. Thank you. Oh, lawyers, we're going to put it on our docket for 2-6-24. We have to just keep up with the you know, on my wheel thing. So we'll just set it for a, I'll say final, but it's not going to be final, but that's what my system has to say for 2624, just so I know what's going on, where we need to be in the case, et cetera. Okay. Yes, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Y'all are excused. And would the 26 be in person, Your Honor? Or no, no, no. It's, it's just, it's kind of just a check in. Just clarifying. <laughs> I not even need it. I don't know. That's, I just have to keep keep things going. Uh, represented by Miss Becky Thank Lane, you. who is here, and their CASA uh, advocate is Miss Debbie Kane. Her supervisor is Mr. Uh, David Fowler. The mom is Miss Rachel Fulton. She's here. Her lawyer is Mr. Russ Baker, and he's uh, the father of the baby. Tyree Jr. is Tyree Gaddis Senior. He's not here. Let's check the waiting room. He's not here. He's representing Terry Ward, who is here. Um, the father of Kyra is Mr. Uh, Gershon Rivers. He's connecting to audio. He's here. Uh, he's represented by Miss Sonia Wright, who's here. The department is represented by Miss Teresa McDonald, her supervisor, Miss Morgan Milloway, and Miss Agatavana is their attorney. Let me make sure I got everybody. Caregivers are present. I'm bopping in and out, but they're here. So, uh, Mr. Rivers is still connecting, but we are, oh, yes, that's right. We're set for trial and permanency hearing. We took the trial off the schedule because of the jury trial Ms. Ward was in. And so today we are just set for a permanency hearing. Um, I read the reports and uh, sounds like we've had some positive hair strands, some positive tests, haven't had some parenting classes. Um, Miss Fulton didn't do the patch. Uh, nobody's had any visits. I was thinking maybe we ought to go to mediation again. That was just me throwing that out. And that's kids are doing well. And that's my take on the report. So Ms. Vanna, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the department would ask today um, just to continue all the orders as, as they are, um, and we're not opposed to mediation, but we're also asking the court to go ahead and set a final trial in this matter um, as soon as possible. Um, and also today, uh, we would like to go ahead and adjudicate Mr. Tyree Gaddis Sr. as the father of Mr. Uh, as the father Sorry. of Tyree, um, so when the court is is ready for that, we would like to go ahead and put on some evidence for that. Okay, you, you can go on and begin on that one. Okay, um, I would like to call Miss Teresa McDonald. Miss McDonald is Mr. Tyree Gaddis Sr., the alleged yes, father. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and has it been ordered that he submit to a paternity test to determine if he is the father of Tyree Gaddis Jr.? Yes, ma'am. And has he complied with those orders? No, ma'am. I think he was scheduled on three different occasions and did not keep any of his appointments. Okay. Um, have, has Mr. Gaddis ever, has he ever told you that he is the father? I've only, I don't believe I've ever had a conversation with Mr. Gaddis about it. Okay. I believe he said in court that he was, but he's never, uh, we've never discussed it. Okay. And do you believe that it's in the best interest of the child to adjudicate 
Mr. Tyree Gaddis Sr. as the father for failing to comply with the court order and submitting to paternity testing today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'll pass the witness. Anybody have any questions of Ms. McDonald? No question. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Van, hold on, let me look up something real quick. Ms. Van, are you attempting to have them adjudicated under 160.622, the Texas Family Code? Yes, Your Honor. Consequences for denying genetic. Yes, Your Honor. Or may adjudicate contrary to an individual whose paternity is being determined if the person declines to submit to genetic testing as court order, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, thank you. I have a question for Ms. McDonald. Okay, Mr. Baker. <clears throat> Ms. McDonald, um, do you have a copy of our certificate? Um, I feel sure that there is one in the electronic file, yes. Um, is Mr. Gatta Sr. listed as the father of Tyner on that birth certificate? I do not know offhand, but I can check. How long would it take you to do that? About two minutes. Cool, thank you. You want her to check, Mr. Baker? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a relevant fact that needs to be on the record, unless the court disagrees with me. No, I agree with you. I think there was a birth verification filed in this case. Let me see. That's what I'm thinking. I have it pulled up. May I answer, or would you rather wait? I don't. I don't care. He is listed. So okay, so he's listed on the birth certificate of his child's father. Okay. So we don't need to do that. The birth verification shows that there's no father for for him. That's concerning. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that, Gagata? I said the birth verification did not show a father, so that is concerning. Let me see. Because he's Miller, the just Miss Milloway just said it did. The birth certificate. Um, oh. The department is able to do a birth verification, so I don't know if that's through a different system. I have all these systems. Yeah, I oh. think the birth verifications are often missing things. So. so the birth certificate said yes, nothing on the birth verification. Correct. Wow, that's weird. And when I, just so you all know, when I spoke with my client about this particular issue, he he was totally fine with being adjudicated the father. He said that he's always been Tyree's father. And I did not specifically ask if he was on the birth certificate, but it 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 sounded to me like he's never tried to deny paternity. He has always acknowledged that he is this child's father and did not wish to contest paternity. Well, if I'm going to agree to name somebody a junior, I would hope that that would just, you know, be that way, you know. Usually, but not you never know, right? Sometimes, but uh, I, I, I think, regardless, Your Honor, I do believe that it's 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 somewhat of an uncontested issue that he is the father of of that child. Okay. Well, I'll adjudicate him under Texas Family Code Section one six point six two two. Okay. What else you have? What else, Miss Fan? I'm just asking for some for a final trial date to be set and that all orders continue. Okay. We'll go in our breakout room and get our calendars in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Mr. Baker, what do you need today? Judge, I just need um, Ms. Fulton to be able to have at least video visits with her children. Okay. <clears throat> Down. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ward. Uh, I have no request today. Okay, thank you. Ms. Wright. Judge, I would ask for video visits as well. Um, Mr. Um, Rivers hasn't been able to have visits with this child since the beginning of the case. And then I would ask for mediation even and get a trial date both. Okay. Have y'all, Ms. Wright, I don't remember. Have y'all been to mediation before? We have not, Judge, no. We mediated, no? Judge, we mediated, we mediated with Emily Miller on March 22nd. And the only thing we got resolved in that mediation was Ayana, the other child. I, I wasn't voted. Okay. Yeah. So uh, right, that was specifically for Ayana, though. Yeah, yeah, we haven't mediated as to the the other children, Judge. Wow. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, thank you. Okay, Miss Kane, what would you like to add? Can Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, I was just going to add that I I know all this stuff takes time, but that Kyra has been really anxious about. And disturbed about knowing what's going to happen to her next. And she's okay. looking for some closure. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Miss Lang. 
So, Judge, I know there's going to be a conversation about video visits and contact, and I just um, wanted to share with the court that I did spend about 30 minutes um, on the phone with Kyra's uh, counselor. And well, hold on, hold on a second. I mean, look at Miss Wolf's cute dog. <laughs> He's a big German Shepherd. He showed up in the background to visit. That was cool. <laughs> Thank you. We like to have dogs in court. Miss Ward always has a dog in court. So anyway, sorry. I was listening. I just saw the dog. I was like, wow, that was cool. Okay, keep going. <laughs> That's okay, Judge. I know she's had she's had some contact with her mom before, so I'm not whatever wherever we are on the drug testing. I'm having a little bit of a hard time keeping up on three clean UAs at this time. I, Rachel very well may be there right now, um, but as to uh, Mr. Rivers, I think he's actually um, not in sync with his consecutive clean drug analysis. Where he had a positive something on his hair strand, but bottom line is, Kara hasn't seen him for an ex many. Here's the pretty dog again for many 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 years, and um, the therapist is adamant at right now that until the parents show consistency and that it's not going to be a come and go type blip on the radar, um, he definitely doesn't want to see any this contact start yet. And when it does start, it needs to be in a therapeutic environment. And Judge, the department is uh, opposed to change the orders and, and start visitation if we're setting this for a final trial. Um, it states that mom needs to have three clean UAs and service plan compliant, which she is not. If she becomes service, service plan compliant, um, the department would then start visits so long as she continues testing clean on her UAs. I have a response to that. Okay, Mr. Baggy. Um, Ms. Fulton had court-ordered video visits up until the last hearing in, I guess it was in November, I believe. Can't remember the exact date. She had court-ordered video visits um, leading up to that court date. However, at that last court date, the judge, after that hearing, ordered that the parents shall not have any visitation unless they have three clean consecutive UAs and virtually 100% compliance with the service plan. Um, that being said, I'm not going to argue about with Ms. Vanna with regard to her statement that Ms. Fulton is in 100% compliance because she's not um, at this point in time. However, in every CPS case I can think of, at least the ones I'm on, with the exception of this one, we regularly allow parents to see their children on a, on a video visit, even if they're dirty on UAs. The court orders that they can't see their children in person all the time without three clean consecutive UAs, even in a supervised setting. But the court, as a general practice, allows parents to see their kids on video visits. And I don't know why this case is being treated differently than all of the other cases. So I think video visits are appropriate. I get that the court would make an order that Ms. Fulton would lose that lose her supervised visits or in-person visits without three clean consecutives. Um, I think the 100% compliance, you know, that's just my opinion. I think that's a little harsh, but that is the court's prior order. I just don't see why the video visits have to be taken away. Is, I know for a while, grandma was, great grandma, I believe, was visiting. Is Was that going, what's happening with that? We haven't had any more visits um, since that last one prior to the holidays, Judge. We've been trying to work our schedule out with Miss Sarah. Um, we had the visit in the home, and that was the first time um, Ayana came over and the two other kiddos met us there. And they, while they had a very nice time, everybody got along great. It was very, very traumatic for them when they went back to Sarah's home. Um, after being in that environment, it, I think it set up some triggers for them. So the Elitums agreed in CPS that we're not going to do it at grandma's home anymore. And she's fine with that. We're, we found a place what, looking at an aquarium or something in Georgetown to meet, but it's just a matter of getting schedules together. But we are planning to do that. And, you know, that prior to that visit in the home, it had not been disruptive to that degree. So or even at all that I know of, and the kids really looked forward to it. Visiting with their sister. Yeah. Oh, well, Sarah sets it up where they get to visit with Ayana and they talk on the phone and they've had some more in-person visits that I'm not, I, I'm not around for those. Mr. Amani and Sarah worked that out. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lang, the parents were ordered to pay child support beginning December 1st. Did you get any child support? Yes, Your Honor. I've received one payment and it was from Mr. Rivers. It was a uh, paid through um, Cash App on December the 13th and I forwarded it to Ms. Sarah. Okay, good. And it's for $125. Uh, what about Christmas gifts? 
I, I didn't receive anything in my office. I will tell you, Judge, that when I was at Grandma's house, there were a number of gifts there at the house for the kiddos. And we sent some home, some things home with Sarah, and there were some that were too big. There was a little car that um, the little boy, TJ, enjoyed riding on, and but they, we couldn't fit them all in Sarah's car. But there were gifts that I, I believe Rachel and Mr. Rivers had both paid for that, that were at the house. That was before the actual Christmas, but it was in that time frame. Okay. Okay. Let me... Let me... Let me think about the visits, but I want to go over my ruling from the court last time and see where we're at on some of this stuff. I know it's in the court report, but I just I need to hear it from the caseworker. And then I want to go to breakout room and uh, get, get on our calendars. Um, but I will order mediation. Um, who do y'all want to mediate this case? I have no preference. Who mediated the last one? Emily Miller? Emily mm -hmm. Miller. I'm fine with Emily. Let me see who we have. Who's still on our wheel? I know I'm on the wheel, and I know Emily's on the wheel. I know Sonia's on the wheel, but Russ Baker, Natalie Bennett, Michelle Cummings, Angela, Kurt Fulk, Emily Miller, Carl Pro, Randy Robinson, Andrew Thompson, Courtney Wheeler, Sonia Wright, Catherine McAnally, Fran Brockstein. Hmm. Fran's pretty good. I haven't used Fran in a long time, or ever on a CPS case. I've never had Fran as a mediator. I have for family law. I thought she was pretty good at family law. What do you think, Sonia? I think we just need someone strong that knows yeah. like CPS law. And yeah. I don't, I, I've only done with Fran once, so I don't know. Um, I say Emily. What about Courtney? I never use Courtney. I don't care. I, I don't I'm, care. Whatever. I don't, I don't have a preference either. Maybe whoever's calendar is open. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll talk about that. We'll see when we report dates, and we'll, then we'll, I'll come back to that. So, okay. Um, Miss Fulton was to move in with great grandma by 11 2023. That happened? She got her own place, Judge. Okay. She has uh, a, a, a duplex or an apartment. Can't remember which. Okay. Enroll in IOP by 11, 20, 23 and attend weekly and successfully complete it. The department does not have a record of that. Okay. Um, and sign releases by 11, 17. It goes with that. Attend all weekly protective parenting and individual therapy appointments. Ms. McDonald. She was, she was uh, unsuccessfully discharged for non-attendance. No, I said no, Mrs. Lack of vehicles. Well, right? hey, hey, Judge, can we at least, instead of Miss McDonald just saying what some result was, uh, at least testify to what was accomplished before the discharge? How many sessions she attended? You can tell me. You can tell me. That. I believe yeah. it's in my report. I think she attended one, maybe two. Okay. Thank you. Um, Meet with caseworker two times per month at her re at mom's residence. I met with her. Um, I did not meet with her in November. I set up several, I think two or three times to meet with her and she did not meet with me. We met once in December. Um, my attempts to schedule a second visit in December were unsuccessful with her. I tried to set up a visit so far this month and, um, she, I believe she was at home when I went by, but not answered the door, but she had texted me twice telling me she was not going to meet with me, uh, regardless of my request or the order. Business okay. after three clean consecutive UAs and service plan compliance. I know about that one. Um, UAs one time per week at a location agreed by CPS at Lightham's and Placement. She's been doing her UAs, hasn't she? If you missed one. Uh, <clears throat> she did miss one. Um, she, well, she missed one in November. I believe she missed one uh, in December. And then we had asked for another one that she did not attend as well. I'll have to look at the list on that. But well, let's look at the list instead, instead of saying we believe or we think so. Sure. Okay. Let me pull up my report. It's all in there. Since the last court hearing, uh, she had a... Um, Invalid specimen was tampered with on 1120. She missed 1127. Um, she had a positive hair strand on 1220. And let's see, I'd have to go in. 
The question was, did she miss any? She missed uh, 1127 and she missed 1222. And um, you, actually, you, have a, you have a number on 1222, yeah. I thought. 1222 says negative. On my report? Yes, ma'am. Are you looking at the right one? Report mine says pending 1222. I can go in and look at the. I can clarify that. Yes, please. When I read her report to go over it before I signed it, I did pull up the drug testing site to see if that one test had come back and it did and it was negative and I put that in there, Theresa. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Um... So just so we're clear, Judge, she, so she's missed once? She's had one missed test? 1127-1222. No, 1222 is a negative. It's a negative. So she's missed one. They, the lab told me she did not go on the 22nd. Well, your supervisor just testified she looked it up and it was a negative. Judge, I was pulling up the website. That is correct. There was one day that she had pending on there before I signed it that I went in and looked to check if it was in there. So did she test on the 22nd or she didn't test on the 22nd? I'm, in, I'm going into the actual website to look at right now, just so we have the record clear. He did not test on 1222, according to the... And then her most recent, she won 11. She had a negative dilute on her drug test. So would she have gone in 1220 and 1222? We asked her to, I asked her again to go on 1222 and she did not go. Okay, because this specimen that I'm looking at was 1220 uh, positive for meth that was transmitted on 1222. Yeah, that was her hair follicle. And then she has a negative for 1220, which is the ETG, and another negative on 1220, which is the uh, drug panel. Right. And then I asked her and Mr. Rivers to go a test again on 1222, um, and neither did. Okay, so they test. They she tested both UTG and drug panel UA on twelve twenty. Correct. And you asked her to test again two days later. Yes. Got it. Uh, and Miss McDonald, did you talk to Miss Fulton's employer? Yes, I did. Okay, so you did get that access. Okay, you don't tell me what he said. Just make sure you talk to him. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rivers was to meet with the child's therapist as previously ordered CPS to set it up by 11, 17, 23. Did y'all do that, Ms. McDonald? They did, though. They did, and he did. Okay, they did. Okay. He met with them? Yes, Judge. He did. At 10, oh, now she's gone. Okay. Yes. Ms. McDonald, Mr. Rivers was to attend all weekly protective parenting and individual therapy appointments. Did that happen? You're muted. All right. He was unsuccessfully discharged for non-attendance. Okay. From therapy? or from? I thought we were doing protective parenting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I got yes. frozen out. Protective parenting, he was unsuccessfully discharged. It was, uh, and I also said in individual therapy appointments. He uh, was in individual therapy. He was attending. Uh, that's when he requested uh, a new therapist saying he felt in um, unsafe with his therapist and a referral was made to a new therapist. Um, and when I checked with that therapist, they had not heard from him. I did ask, uh, texted him and asked him if he had heard from him and if he hadn't, please contact them. But I have not heard anything from him about that. And judge just, they were supposed to call him is what I understood. And I know Teresa did reach out, I think late last week and asked him to call if he hadn't heard from them. But the last, whenever we, or Teresa assigned him a new therapist, um, I can't recall the guy's name, but his, he said, basically, I'll get back with you next year when my schedule is opened back up. Right. Thanks, okay. Wendy. Sweet. And I think I remember when we talked about him being concerned about the last therapist, when we talked about that the last hearing. Okay. Um, 
week, uh, weekly drug and alcohol testing. That's a new report. Uh, no marijuana in UA. Each parent hair strand nail test. Did Mr. Rivers and Miss River, Miss Fulton and Mr. Rivers did that, right? Uh, he did do his hair strand, yes. And she did too, right? Yes, she did too. That's and that good. was the one that was positive for methamphetamines for her. And his was positive for methamphetamines, cocaine, and marijuana. Did the parents provide you in writing their current phone number, mailing address, and physical address by 11, 20, 11 17, 23? I did receive that for Mr. Rivers and Miss Fulton, but not okay. for Mr. Gaddis. Okay. Tyree and play therapy? Yes, he has started that. Child support that. Did y'all get the de-identified file? Yes, Judge. Okay. okay. Since Mr. Rivers met with uh, Kyra's individual therapist, what was the outcome of that visit? Well, there was some concerns very confused on, on uh, contradictory information that he provided the therapist regarding his employment and res residence and such. But bottom line, I think the therapist had concerns about, um, well, he listed uh, several concerns, uh, his instability, his unemployment, his, um, you know, just how he was supporting himself, uh, just didn't, did recommend that Kyra not have any visits at that time, just because of the instability and wanted to see more consistency with things before he would recommend that. And judge, he basically said he wanted to see one year of clean drug testing, one year of stability, um, basically on all fronts from Mr. Rivers before we would even introduce him back to the child. And so it just wasn't real workable for this case, yeah. given just the time right. frame. And I tried to communicate, but no one would agree with anything. Okay. 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 Um, let's go. Miss Wolf, be on hold for a second. I want the lawyers and Casa to go to breakout room and we'll look at our calendars and come back and I can announce when we're going to do uh, who the mediator is going to be and we're going to have the trial. Hey, y'all. We're going to be set for trial. It's kind of weird. It's Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, April 9th, and then Thursday, April 11th. We'll begin at nine o'clock in person in the Burnett uh, Courthouse. Uh, I'm gonna order mediation with Emily Miller. That is also in person and that is to occur by 4-1-24. Um, all other orders are gonna remain in effect. Parent, y'all have service plan. You have to comply with your parent rights subject to termination. Judge, okay. if yes, you don't sir. mind, Rachel, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you sit up please? Yes, sir. Did you hear the trial schedule announcement for the judge? Because I saw you were connecting to audio. Did you hear what the judge said about our trial dates? No. Okay, let me repeat it. I figured you didn't. Um, we're set for trial on April 9th and April 11th at 9 a.m. going to be in person at the Burnett County Courthouse, where you and I have been attending court already. And the judge has ordered us to meet, go to mediation on April 1st with Emily Miller, and that is going to be in person as well at the Burnett County Courthouse. Did you hear okay. me? Yes, Gosh, sir. We're not sure okay. it's going to be April 1st, though, right? We've got to oh, get with no. her. We're having it prior, set by prior then. To, uh, yes. Uh, mediate on or before April 1st, I should have said. So it might not be April 1st. It may be sometime before that, but we're going to have to get the schedule from the mediator to figure out the date, okay? Okay. All right, and we'll follow up with the um, a text message or an email with those dates so you have them. Okay, Rachel? All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, everybody. Good luck. Thank y'all. We'll be at Miss Wolf. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, say hi to your dog and uh, we'll be in recess for the day.